Hello and welcome to episode 29 of In PS We Trust. My name's Davey and joined with me as always is Phil. Press the action button to jump down. And Spencer. Thank you for the advice, Phil. So we're a fortnightly PlayStation podcast and we each bring one topic of conversation to the table to go in depth on. But first, before we get into that, boys, what are you drinking? Right, as tradition dictates, I start. This time, I'm on the ciders. But, oh, okay. yeah, I always go to Asda, and they usually have a four for six. Which means you get four for, no. Yeah, you get four bottles for six pound. However, they've changed it. Now, it's four for three. So you get four items for the price of three. So it's the cheapest item is free. How does that work out? Have they fucked you over with this new this new meta? I thought they did, and then I realised they're two pound bottles. So the cheapest one being free means it's four for six pound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's decent. Oh. It's exactly the same. <laughs> Still, that's that's not too bad, I guess. Well, I suppose if you're getting something a little bit pricey, then it's going to start racking up, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But and if you're getting that posh stuff. So you want to stick to, you know, like um, White Star. You know, you want to get on that stuff that's like a pound a litre. That's the stuff you want. The stuff that if you want to peel wallpaper off, you just spray on your walls. And, uh, oh, lovely. Imagine drinking four bottles of White Cider during a podcast. I don't think any of us could take that, really. <laughs> well, we got the big quiz next week. Christ. So uh, who knows what we're going to do for that one. Remember, you just bring your own <laughs> rules to that. So... If someone brings in a white star rule, we're all going to have to obey. Jesus Christ. So what side did you go for then, Spence? Right, well, this is where Asda let me down. Because usually I'll go for an old mount. However... Okay, great choice. Great choice, great choice. However, they only had one flavour of old mount. And I did grab two of them, berries and cherries. Great flavour. Lovely cider. But because of that, I had to grab Copperbergs as well. And I've never been a fan of Copperbergs. But they're okay. They're just worse like, old mounts. Yeah, they're like a decent alternative, aren't they? What's that one? What's that one that's got the um, the proper crazy name? Um, Record Len. Record Len. Oh, Record that's Bangs. One. That's, that's the top tier. That's that's like the proper highbrow stuff. That's what yeah. I like. And old mounts just under that. So, um, and, But I like, the, um, I like the one that's like... Uh, Kiwi and something. Oh, they kiwi do. and lime. That's a that's a banger. Of I'm a not a fan of that. that nah, berries and cherries, passion fruit. I got raspberry. Yeah, raspberries okay. I was going to say this is a joke for the visual only listeners. Yeah, mum, can I have a record lig? We've got record lig at home. Record lig at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's so true. <laughs> It's so true. It's it's like a backup bitch, but it's not one that you're like ashamed to go home with. It's like an okay one. It's all right. It's all right. She'll do. She'll do. And what about yourself, Phil? What are you on today? Uh, well, Davey, um, I've kicked off tonight uh, with a couple of uh, Budweiser's. Pretty standard for the show. I know Spencer used to be sponsored um, by them, but that's since passed over to me. Uh, so thanks, Spence. Cheers for Welcome that. Me. And I'm also mixing that with... Some wild fruits, courtesy of Beyond NRG. So what is that? Is that like uh, is that like an energy drink thing? Well, I was fortunate enough to be chosen by the lads at XL, cheers Lance, uh, to receive a Beyond NR NRG uh, drinks pack. So I'm trying that tonight, starting off with the wild fruits. I'll let you know how it goes throughout the cast. Um, I've got a couple of different flavours to try throughout uh, recording tonight. So we've got the lemon sherbet, the strawberry watermelon and lime, and something called space rocks. Space rocks. What does space rocks taste like? <laughs> well, you're about to find out. You'll have to tell us all. So you're going to be literally, if you have three of these different flavours, you're going to be bouncing off the fucking walls later. We better make sure that we put in like a Death Stranding button. So always it's going to be coming up <laughs> every five fucking minutes, I swear to God. Well, what I'm hoping for, as I'm mixing it with uh, a couple of buds tonight, and we are recording on a Thursday and I'm working Friday, I'm hoping this doubles up as a hangover cure. So beyond, hopefully that works out. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm creating. Energy <laughs> drink and alcohol. It might be even worse tomorrow. I'll let you know. 
Do you remember when we did that when we were totally pissed up that one time and we put pre workout in with like a <laughs> vodka a vodka lemonade? Uh no, no. It wasn't a vodka lemonade. I think it was um a Jaeger bomb and pre workout. But it was the special pre workout that I'd bought from America which you couldn't buy in Britain because it had certain substances in that were like illegal or something. It's right? banned, wasn't it? It's banned over it. A banned substance, they would call it, if we were entering the Olympics. Um, and I think that was the night you fell down my stairs <laughs> and nearly knocked my mum over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty much, yep. So that was the uh, fallout of uh, mixing those two things together. So hopefully... Well, I'm pretty lucky, actually. The bedroom's next door, so I don't actually have to go downstairs at all tonight. So I won't be uh, tackling any of that during the podcast. Oh, well, that's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> For me, guys, it's way less interesting than you lot. I got work tomorrow. I'm not drinking. And so I thought, you know what? I really fancy, like, a Pepsi. I really fancy, like, a multi-pack of Pepsi. And I got in. What, why are you doing that face for? What? Wait, wait, it depends. Wait, 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 wait. It depends. Come Pepsi on. Cherry. Yeah. Pepsi Cherry. Of course, 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 course. Even Pepsi Max is decent, though. Nah. I'm not having any slander against the Pepsi Max nah. on the podcast. Nah. Anyway, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to pick up like a nice multi pack of that. That would sort me out, right? That'd be a nice little, nice, tasty beverage rather than the squash, which I typically have on the podcast on a sober night. Got there with this craving, this ungodly craving for a cherry. And they didn't have any. So instead, plate. no, not worse. I had to go for a Coke Zero Cherry. What kind of madness is that? It's fucking tragic. It is the worst choice I could have possibly ever made. I wish I was on White Star tonight. That's how bad this choice is. It is so poor that I don't know what i've done to deserve this in a past life because i must have done something really bad i must have i must have like burnt down a school or something in a past life to to get this kind of karma go and get yourself a beer in it i was gonna say this do you not have anything in your fridge no i mean the only things that I, what am i gonna drink right i could have jack daniels and mix it in with this i don't know that's gonna it might improve it can can i deliver rue you something yeah <laughs> you might be able is there to. like an alcohol delivery service where you live there's, uh, there's Asda groceries, groceries. Should, yeah. and we could see if it turns up throughout the show. <laughs> oh, mate, you're more than welcome. As to groceries, me up, mate. I'd be, I'd be much, I'd be much appreciated at that. Honest to God, because I know back in the day when when we used to live in Caldicott that you could ring the um, the Indian down there. What is it called? Night of Bengal. Shout out, guys, if I'm ever in there. Um, they used to deliver you wine and alcohol if you uh, asked nicely. Yeah, so, uh, and maybe a house that sort of hook up. I tell you what, yeah. if you do it through Uber Eats, I've got a fifty percent code. Well, here we go, listeners. If things get too drastic and then you start seeing me switch over to either like a Matthias Rosé that I've bought from the Indian or something of that nature, <laughs> then you know what's happened, all right? You can tell. <laughs> and for you audio listeners, I'll let you know. I won't leave you blind on this. But I think it's time we move it into what we've been playing. This time on NPS We Trust, what have the boys been playing? Okay, so it's been two weeks since the last episode, guys. What have you been playing? Spencer, you normally kick us off. My answer was about the run out. <laughs> Apologies, <laughs> listeners and co-hosts. Just edit it out. Nah, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> it's funny, what do you mean? I was scrambling. Dead air. <laughs> yeah, you're editing on this one, Spencer. All the all your blunders, you can edit out. Leave our blunders in it. Yeah, I think it's, it's funny. Fine. <laughs> Especially for, Just, now that we have the visual as well. For the visual watchers, let's say, for the watchers. For the watchers, for the listeners. That's a good yeah, bit of content hashtags. for him. That's a Twitter moment, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. I don't know who you follow, mate, but I don't want to know about it. Anyway, so what have you been playing? Um, right, this is where the podcast is quite hard for me. Nothing. Really? Nothing? I what? don't think I've played anything. Wow. At all. I've played wow. some stuff that I can't mention on the podcast. Because it's illegal. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you to explain dress? it, I'd have to... Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's been playing. He's got his 360 out and he's playing bloody Halo. Come on. That's actually, you know what? Fuck Nintendo. I'll say it anyway. 
I downloaded Yuzu. Yuzu is a PC emulator for the Nintendo Switch. Fuck Nintendo. Nintendo are scumbags with their games. The price is, go buy Smash 4, it's still 60 quid. On the fucking Wii U. Fuck Nintendo. They haven't supported Melee all this time. I hate that company. So what I've done, I downloaded Yuzu. Didn't want to buy Metro Dread. Emulate it. Fuck it. Mario Party Superstars just came out. Emulate it. I got the Mario Golf game. Emulating it. I got 3D Mario. Emulating it. Bayonetta 1. Bayonetta 2. Everything. It's always good to have a different viewpoint, isn't it, on the podcast? You know, like, we, we're on, we're all about physical. Spencer, you're on all, all about emulation. It just gives a different viewpoint to the uh, podcast. So that's, that's a really nice thing that you're trying out that. Obviously, only so you could bring the review to the listeners. You wouldn't be doing it for any personal gain there, Spencer, would you? Uh, I mean, play games. <laughs> I'm trying to give you excuses here. No, nah, my excuses, they Again, wouldn't hold up in court, the, mate. In Monopoly, that's the get out of jail card. Nah. I'll be, I, mean, I hate it. Nintendo so You're much. Staying in for three I'll turns. stay in jail. I hate Nintendo. <laughs> I'll say. So tell. Oh, sorry, Karen. The sorry. game on Yuzu I've been playing the most. Today I played a bit of 3D World, but not enough to warrant me talking about it, I'll say. What I've played the most is Pokemon Shield. Oh, yeah. Is that actually any good? Because I, I haven't played a Pokemon game uh, since I bought the one with a whale on the front. Oh, Kyogre, that's Sapphire. Oh, yeah. Sick I, game. I bought that one. Sick game. Decent, yeah, decent. The remake one. Yeah, it was good. Oh, the remake. I didn't play the remake one. The original. Sick. I didn't play the original. I, I stopped after Blue. How do you top perfection, you know? Oh, that's mad. That's mad. Uh, but yeah, Pokemon Shield. I like it a lot. I think it's really fun. It's just a Pokemon game, you know? You could sit down and just play a Pokemon game for hours. It's just mindless fun. But they, a lot of people complain that this game's too easy. And I think that's because when you uh, kill a Pokemon, you knock out a trainer's Pokemon and you rob them because they give you like free grand every time you beat someone. Instead of the Pokemon that killed their Pokemon getting XP, all of your Pokemon get XP. It's shared XP. And that used to be an item they had in the older games that would do that, but now it just happens. I'll let you know the reason why. Go on. The reason why Pokemon games have got so easy is we've all grown up. They were very difficult as a kid. You'd just get lost. You'd just go around the same town hunting the same Pokemon. Wouldn't really understand the story because you wouldn't read any of the dialect. Now we're all older and we read things and like we get how a Pokemon game works. I've got Shield. No, actually I've got Sword, that version of Pokemon. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's, it's easy and it's easy as Red. It's easy as all the Pokemon games I've ever played. They are easy games. They are easy games, but this is easier because the mechanics make it easier. It's Shield XP and you don't have to know Pokemon types. Because if you've battled the Pokemon once, it tells you which of your moves are effective against it, rather than oh, you having lame. to know. Yeah, the, it tells you in the game. Oh, that's lame. Yeah, I mean, I mean, people always say that Pokemon's like baby's first RPG, and it is true. It is true. Like, it really is. It's a really simple, watered-down RPG. But it's really fun. I mean, there's a reason why the series is really popular and, and sells as much as it does, because it is fun. It's really addictive, just kind of just relaxing gameplay to a certain extent. But that was always the fun I found with Pokemon, was figuring out which moves were effective. And especially for me, I only really know the original, like, 151. So anything after that's a total mystery to me. So I don't know if something's like a fairy and dark type or whatever, because that didn't even exist when I was when I was into Pokemon, you know? So it's... How, how well do you know the 151, David? <laughs> really well. Really, 69? Really... Oh, God, I can't name the numbers. I can sing I you all you the would songs, know 69. though. 69, come on. Sing no. you all the songs, you say. Are you can sing all the songs. Rap? Yeah, I can do a poker rap. I can do a poker rap. Do you reckon we'll get YMCA'd for that, though? Yeah, probably. You yeah, keep saying how, YMCA. How YMCA how YMCA I know, he, he, he loves saying YMCA. For I just a, thought it was funny. It is funny, it's class. <clears throat> yeah, we definitely would. It'd be so accurate that they'd be like, there's no way they didn't just rip that off and put that on. Just like when I was singing Danger Zone last episode and they thought that was somehow a recording. I just don't I just don't get it. But what I want to ask you then, Spence, have you played all this in all these Nintendo games? Bell Sprite. <laughs> That's what it is, it's Bell Sprite. It's crazy. One of my favourites. What a top lad he is. Um Yeah, with you playing all these Nintendo games. How is Dread? Because I've got it here. It's still wrapped. I just yeah. haven't had time because I've been doing YouTube stuff. Um, and I'm hoping to have a chance to sit down and play it this weekend. 
does it hold up to what everyone's saying where it's one of the best games of the year i haven't played it much um i've only played it for maybe an hour or so i've really not put too much time into it only a little bit um so far i love it it's really cool it's really fucking cool there are some like stealth mechanics and like situations where you have to run and it just feels so sick you have to try to get away the, your, your movement options are awesome my main issue is that because i'm emulating it to free aim in the game you use the left bumper on a pro controller but because i'm emulating it i'm using my gamecube controller which doesn't have one so what i'm having to do i bound it to right on my d-pad because that was the only like free thing so i have to hold right on the d-pad then move the stick with like like it's a clitoris you know with my pointer finger and then shoot with the other end I've got a quick question. Seeing as we are a PlayStation podcast, and I, I'd like to relate it back to, uh, you know, the games that some of our listeners probably are playing. Um, you didn't like Fist, did you? And Fist is a very similar game to, to Metroid Dread. How do you think the uh, two compare? Because it sounds like Metroid Dread is a relatively interesting uh, experience for you. You're enjoying that. But you didn't really get on with Fist, did you? What, what are the sort of key differences between the two games, would you say? Um, uh, it's, it's not even that hard to say, actually. The movement's just a lot cleaner. The, this are like actual good cutscenes because there aren't really very good cutscenes in Fist. Oh, they were they were just yeah yeah not they great. were probably part of the worst thing yeah in Fist really. Uh, and I think me and Dave echo that statement really. Yeah, I think Metro is just a very polished version from an experienced IP, and it's just it's a good game. I'm I'm looking forward to playing more. I did want to keep playing Fist. I just got bored. And I thought if I don't play, I'll probably never go back. I stopped playing. I've not gone back. I haven't played Days Gone in two weeks, to be fair. <laughs> so I j I'm terrible at playing games. I'm bad at it. I suppose the thing is, sometimes you go through fits and starts, though, and there'll be some weeks where we, you know, we're, we're fucking cutting stuff out for what we're going to talk about, what we've been playing, because we've been playing so many different titles. Yeah. And there's other weeks. I'm, I'm much the same as yourself, Spence, if, if I'm honest. There's really... Sometimes I come into this and I got so many games to talk about and I, I kind of whittle it down to only talking about maybe three. This week, I'm kind of struggling because I haven't played an awful lot either. Uh, th there's really only been kind of two things that I've actually played. Uh, and one of them was I completed the day after our last podcast. So don't worry about it. You know, some, sometimes you just go through these moments where games just ain't hitting. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly normal. I will say, not to do with gaming, but seeing as I was on the topic of Pokemon and illegal things, I got a little thing. Um, I found out on my chipped fire stick, <laughs> so I'll, I'll carry on with the illegal stuff. My chipped fire Jesus. stick um, has like all You're these channels. Get banned, bro. It's fine. It just banned me. Get me off the show. It's fine. <laughs> I got all these channels and stuff on there, and one of them is 24 7 channel. So it's got loads of like 24-7. I found out I have a trap station. Nah, I mean, that's on there, yeah, but nah, it's not that. Nice. I've got 24-7 Dragon Ball, 24-7 Hunter x Hunter, 24-7 Super, Dragon Ball Super. I've got all this sick stuff, and I found out the one channel is Pokemon 1, 2, and 3, which is Pokemon the first movie, Pokemon 2000, and Pokemon Spell of the Unknown, which is one of Entei. And so my story is, I watched Pokemon the first movie again the other night. First time I watched it since I was a kid. I still cried. <laughs> I still <laughs> cried. Mate, the, the crazy thing is, you, you'd be too young for this. But when that film came out in the cinema, that was like as if everyone had just come out of a Holocaust museum seeing that <laughs> film. Because everyone was just crying in, in, in that movie. Everyone was crying. It was, it was nuts. It was nuts. Pikachu, man. Oh. Uh, you oh. cried at the Pokemon movie. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. You didn't want to see. Op you want to see Optimus Prime die <laughs> when he hands that Matrix over <laughs> to Ultra Magnus and he drops it. My God, as a kid, that was the worst thing that I could ever imagine. Oh my God, I was I was bawling. I watched that. That's the moment. That's the moment I learned to cry as a kid. Well, see, there's there's only a couple of movies that have ever made me cry, like proper cry from sadness. And as an adult, the only film that does it now is Terminator 2. That's the only, that's the only one. That's the Titanic for men, I've heard it being described. And that is so true. Seeing Arnie go down into lava. 
saddest moment in history in cinema history that is oh my god oh i'm tearing up thinking about it i'm tearing up thinking about it but phil what have you been playing these last couple of weeks well, seeing as Spencer has covered the Nintendo and the legal aspect of uh, video gaming, let's talk about PC games. Has anyone played a fucking PlayStation game? This? You, you can put like a big cheer, <laughs> Spencer, in the edit if you want, okay? So I, I've been continuing with New World. Um, I'm up to the level now where I'm going to experience my first instance. Um, so if we if we liken kind of World of Warcraft, like as you're leveling, I think the first instance you generally come across uh, when your alliance uh, is, is, is probably like level 10, maybe. I'm up to level 25, and this is the first experience of an instance uh, in New World. So it's very different in the way they treat it. You have, you have to get to a much higher level. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I'll probably give you an update on the next uh, podcast because I haven't got all the way through on it. Um, I'm finding myself sort of pushed towards a DPS build, going to the Rapier and the Musket in the Light Armor, which is generally the same as how I played Ro- uh, World of Warcraft being the Rogue. Uh, it's a full dexterity build with a bit of constitution for my health build. Uh, and as I said, I'm, I'm getting on with the game and, and, and really enjoying it. It's uh, one of the games that you don't feel pressure to play like you did with World of Warcraft, purely because it's not a rental game. You've bought it and you can just play it when you like and level when you like. Of course, all the people that I play with are now level 60, so they're all doing the end game stuff, but there's not a lot of end game stuff in New World just yet. Um, so I think by the time they start introducing the higher level raids, I'll be up at 60 at that point. But um, yeah, still keeping going with the PC gaming on, on New World. Have you managed to find any sea shanties yet? Or are they still just out of your grasp? I think just out of reach. They're probably level 30. I'll probably get to a sea shanty at 30, maybe. Okay. Fair enough. Maybe when I've finished Amorai and ex- Excavation, I'll get to level 30 and then we'll see some sea shanties. Maybe that's what you do when you, you finish an instance. Maybe that's the... I, I hear it's quite a challenge, actually. Maybe that's the end game. Maybe that's what it is. It's the search for the sea shanty. And that's when you go off onto the pirate ships and then you get all the Pirates of Caribbean music all the time. 24-7. That's like, that's like an unlock on a trophy, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Oh, that would make me play it. That would make me play it. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> So is that everything for yourself, or have you been playing anything else? No, I've actually played a PlayStation game. Oh my god. <laughs> One of us has. Shock horror, shock horror. First time we'll mention a play, uh, PlayStation game on a PlayStation podcast. So I've been um, getting back into uh, playing a bit more of Death Stranding Director's Cut, um, and I've completed all the road building now. So I've built the road from uh, distribution, south, uh, sorry, distribution center south of Lake Knot City, that's a mouthful, um, up into Mountain Knot City. So, Davey, I think you've played uh, part of the game. I think you've probably seen both of these cities, haven't you, in Death Stranding? I'm surprised. I'm just actually really surprised you didn't build the road. My, my road's built throughout my entire world. Oh, online. in the original one, I did the entire road, obviously, to get the trophy. Oh. Um, but in Death Stranding Director's Cut, there's an extra road, and this is what I'm describing. Oh, okay. Deal, All right. It? It's okay. a new road. A new road. So from distribution safe center of Lake Knot City. So that's the, kind of the center in kind of the middle portion of the game, uh, right until the end city, which is Mountain Knot City, up at the top of the mountain. Uh-huh. So it goes all the way and loops around. Well, not loops around, but it loops up towards the top of the mountain. It's really cool to build. So in the base game, there is moments when you're building the roads where you're mm-hmm. kind of going through a lot of snow terrain which is always a bit of a bastard to get through. And that was some of the most challenging road building I found was you're deep in like BT territory, yeah. there's snow yeah. everywhere, and you're just carrying a shed load of supplies to get a road built. Is it much of the same with this new location? Is it quite challenging to actually get it done? Yeah, it's exactly that. And of course, certain parts of the mountain you can't walk to. So you've kind of got to walk around the mountain to get to them. So that makes it challenging in itself. But of course, I am sort of endgame in Death Stranding. I am just doing the director cut parts. Um, so I think if I had tried to do this a lot earlier in the game, I don't think I would have been able to manage it. I think you need to get to the end game and sort of have all the optionality of all the uh, add-ons and kind of, you know, the, the, the sort of power-ups you get throughout the game uh, to be able to achieve that. So uh, yeah, it is a challenge even now at the end game. But I think, yeah, you, w- you would need to be finished most of the game to be able to do that. So are your thoughts still exactly the same as they were in terms of just really loving this and just really just kind of getting a, uh, getting re-enraptured with it? Not like you weren't already enraptured with it. You go on about it all the time. But 
Have you seen the t-shirt I'm wearing tonight? I have noticed the t-shirt. It's literally my Death Stranding t-shirt because I knew I'd be talking about this. But um, yeah, you know, even to back this up, they they, they filled it with uh, Half-Life references. Um, There's a a new mission uh, set up, which I'm going through. Um, Obviously, I'm picking up on all the references they're dropping on Half-Life. They also do a mission which is all around, or a set of missions, which is all around Cyberpunk 2077. And yeah, that's that's wasted on me, as I'm sure it is with most people that play the game, because not many people got very far in Cyberpunk, really, and really got into that game. But Half-Life, obviously, I'm loving all those things. Basically, all these missions give you new abilities or new items. As I said in the last um, podcast, I just achieved the Gordon Glasses. Um, now I've got the gravity, glo- uh, gravity Gloves which basically enable you to like pick up chiral and items from range. So you might be walking along, you might have your packages on your back, and you'll see one of the chiral um, growths out of the floor. And instead of walking over it to pass square to be able to pick it up, you can just pick it up because you can like gravity glove it. It's That's really cool. cool. Like Magneto makes, powers. Basically, it's Magneto powers, yeah. yeah. And you can like pull like uh, packages off kind of... Um, off, off bad guys as you walk past them and things like that so it's, it's it's very fun yeah that's awesome that sounds awesome i i need to get to this i really do i need to just get done with my backlog which i'll be talking about in a mm-hmm. moment and and get to this game because this is one that i was staring at my trophy list the other day thinking what should i tick off that's like nearly there and i'm so close to the end of the death stranding one it, all it would take yeah. is a couple more play sessions and i'll have it and and then i'd want to do what you've done Get the director's cut content. Yeah, get in there, get it done. You know, but Death Stranding is is definitely one of those games that loves games. You can tell Hideo Kojima, he's not just a, a games director. You know, a legendary games director. There I go. I've I've undersold him, right? He, he genuinely loves video games purely because there is just so many references to so many other games throughout the game. You know, I've mentioned Half Life and Cyberpunk, but of course, all the Horizon stuff is in there as well. If you want to delve into that and 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 see kind of like different parts of the game introduced into Death Stranding, it's it's just a lovely experience to be in, mate. It's so many things that I'm just going through, going, yeah, look. You know, a companion cube. How cool is that, right? And then they start talking about, you know, the references with Half-Life, with kind of the aliens coming through portals and things. And it, it, it's just really cool. I, I, I just really, really appreciate every, you know, every part that's gone into this game. Um, yeah, it, it is definitely up there for one of my favorite games of all time. Well, it's got, a love for Death Stranding so far. Well, I got one question for you. I noticed okay. that somebody tweeted at Hideo the other day, because I follow him on mm. Twitter, and they had his okay. book. He's got his own book out. Are you thinking about getting that? Well, it is my birthday on the 14th of November, so that's 10 days away from recording. So uh, if you get on Amazon quickly, lads, you could possibly pick that up for me. We'll have to see what comes through the door for you, mate. Spencer's on his phone. <laughs> Cheers, lads. You don't have to buy me that, obviously. Just get me a couple of pints from right. I'll be happy. You'd be lucky to get that, mate, from me. Um <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, other, other than that, I, I've just been um, setting up my uh, PlayStation original um, for the spoiler cast from the past. Um, I've got my CRT down from storage, and I've also played the first hour of Metal Gear Solid. But I won't go into that, because we're going to delve into that and do a deep dive in our spoiler cast from the past, um, which will be, I think we're recording on the 25th of November, and it'll be out towards the start of December, won't it, lads? Yeah, it gives us plenty of time to get it done, get our notes together. And to work around the rest of things that are going on. I mean, we got your birthday coming up. It's going to be a heavy old night. We got episode 30 of the podcast in two weeks' time, which is going to be even heavier. So we got a lot of drinking and a lot of time that I'm going to be comatose for because I'm 32. (laughs) And so I can't drink anymore. I'm going to be 37, mate. Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's going to be it. But yeah, but you haven't hit the prime yet. You haven't hit the prime yet. No, I'm still getting there. I'm, I'm a bit like Ronaldo. We're still waiting to get to our prime. <laughs> Almost there. Exactly, exactly. But mate, but mate, what games have you been playing over the last two weeks? We've gone through Spencer. We've gone through mine. Let's hear what you've been up to. Well, guys, I'll let you know. My games are PlayStation games. So that, you know, a nice little break from the podcast here. Um, okay. So the first one. Last episode, I talked all around uh, House of Ashes, and that uh, I'd got quite far into it, and I thought one more PlayStation, uh, one more PlayStation, one more play session, and I'll get it finished. And we did. Me and my wife, the following day after the podcast, sat down, unpacked the popcorn, got the drinks out, and just smashed through the rest of it. And it was it was superb. It was honestly incredible. In terms of what they've done 
with their characters, their storytelling, their graphical style, everything. It's just been a constant improvement ever since Man of Medan first came out. Whatever they've done since with the rest of these, um, with the rest of the series, um, it's never been on the same level as Until Dawn has been. But this is, I think, if anybody is looking for a horror experience this time of year, especially, they want that spooky vibes. They want something that gets your heart racing, that gets your the person who's chilling out with you shouting at you for fucking up a button combo or or moving the controller away you're not supposed to, that's the game for it. So so this game, would I be right in saying it's quite similar to the way Heavy Rain would play? That was one of the games that I put forward for the spoiler cast from the past, but we didn't actually... Um, came, I think it came second in the vote, didn't it? Would you, would you liken it to that kind of storytelling? Is it that kind of pace of game? No, it's not as slow as Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain's a lot mm. slower. Um, so the difference with something like Heavy Rain and with... Um, and with like um, until dawn or or any, or any of or any of um, this series with House Vashes and, and Man of Medan uh, and Little Hope, of course, um, the Dark Pictures anthology. If I use its proper name, the difference is really with um, with Heavy Rain. You go into an area and you've got an area to explore. It's much more like The Walking Dead is in how it delivers its story in that you go into an area, you've got to find kind of key items or key things that kind of put the story onwards. Um, with the Dark Pictures Anthology, it's not like that. What happens is you go into an area and it's full of lore, basically. Every single place full of files for you to interact with and they in, and they change how the character interacts with the story. So if you read these lore files or you find these lore files... Not only do you as a player understand more, your character does. And that will oh, then change how they... That's in really interesting. It would change if they figure out then what happens next and which options that you, you get as a player to take, depending on what your character knows. So, without spoiling anything, the creatures in this game, they have uh, a weakness. And you can figure that weakness out yourself. It's shown to you, and one of the characters knows that weakness then, intrinsically, and that's just a story point. But the other characters can figure out that weakness themselves, depending on your actions and your lore finding. And if they don't, it makes it a hell of a lot harder for them. But if they do figure it out, then they know what to do, and then they'll grab that thing, and they'll be able to then inflict some damage. So the difference is, you go into an area on the Dark Pictures Anthology, and you go up to an item... And it would give you an icon which will show you that will move the story on. Right. So you know to not interact with that item until you've kind of explored that area if you want to. Or if you don't care, you can just click on that and go. Um, and, and that's the way it kind of does it. Whereas the other things are, are kind of more find this in the environment and that moves it on. Um, obviously, this is, is the fourth in the series so far you're playing? No, it's the that third. Course. So you've got Until Dawn, which is like a separate thing entirely. So that was mm -hmm. produced by... The same studio, um, but it was Sony's money, basically. So it was a first party. Um, uh, it was a second party deal. So there, it was exclusive to PlayStation, totally separate. But then Bandai Namco kind of saw what uh, what the team were capable of, and then just put them on this. And so this is the third out of four games that they're going to be doing for this season right. of the Dark Pitch Anthology, with the next one coming out next year. So. Jumping in, if we were going to jump in at number three, does it introduce you slowly into these game mechanics? Because this seems quite foreign to someone like me who's never really played Heavy Rain, for example. You say it's quite different to that. But these these type of games, I've never really played a lot of them. Does it introduce you quite slowly or are you dropped in the deep end with all this? No, you're not dropped in the deep end. It normally starts mm -hmm. off a case where there's like no risk and it shows you what you need to do in terms of it will show you... Um, kind of normally actually actually with all these games now you get me thinking about it they normally start in the past and they start with the character that they're going to die regardless but that's the way to kind of teach you and if they die earlier on then you learn from that then at that point but they're going to eventually pop the clock even though it's the third one of this series they're not linked in any way the stories so you can just get in there enjoy it they're each about like four or five hours long uh, at a push and just enjoy it. They're just fun stories. And the thing about it is, this is where they've peaked so far. So what I would say is, start with this one. 
And if you don't like this one, you sure as hell ain't going to like the others. Because this is the best one by a landslide. Um, I don't think it's as good as Until Dawn. But it's close. And that's a lot more than you can say for Little Hope and Man of Medan. So that's the first thing. And then the only other thing I've been playing, guys, I just put a review out for it. Uh, and it was Resident Evil Outbreak. So I've been playing that all week. And I can say that here because we are still in what we've been playing. Of course. I, I do it on purpose now. It doesn't surprise me as much as it used to maybe five episodes ago when you mentioned it at the start. I was like, shot, shot, shot. <laughs> but not anymore. All I got to say about this, guys, we need to get together and play Outbreak. We need to do it. Spencer, as the master of stealing content, I'm sure you know that there's a way to emulate this game. Already got it up and working, mate. <laughs> of course he does. And I'm logged into does. the forums. I've already got access to the servers. It's sound. Listeners, basically, just to fill you in for those that don't know, Resident Evil Outbreak launched in 2003 over in Japan. And then it came to UK and US and all the other territories in 2004, spread over the over that year. Now, for us in the UK, when it originally launched in 2004, we never had an option to play online. We just didn't get it in the European regions. Um, but even though the servers are long gone, there is a way to play this online now. Really easy to find out how to do it. It's a fan. It's a fan funded server. Just go onto YouTube and just type in Resident Evil Outbreak 2021. There's a guy who's got a video up on there, which is sensational. It guides you through the entire process. Really, really easy. Do it. It's just Resident Evil, classic style of Resident Evil, tank controls, puzzles, limited inventory, hard difficulty. But you've got your buddies with you. That just sounds epic to me. It sounds like you're reading from the script from your video because I watched it earlier and it's, it, it, it is very good. Um, but if any of our listeners haven't seen um, your channel, uh, they should put SSJ Davey into uh, YouTube and his, his channel will pop back up. He does quite a lot of uh, different Resident Evil uh, videos, don't you? And you've got up to Outbreak now. I think Outbreak Fall 2 will be your next one. Yeah, that'd be the next one. But what I'm hoping is, guys, and this is why I think this would be something quite, quite cool for the audience too. When I get my PC, my new PC is coming in next week, hopefully. I want to play that through with you guys. I don't want to play it offline because uh, I've already got that experience. I want to play it through with you guys. And I'm thinking, what we do it as a land? What we could Come do around. is we Let's could... do a sleepover, old school it. That would like be you class. would back in the day. Sleepover. That'd be sick. Stream it. That would get be it online. Awesome. Bit of vodka. A lot of vodka. All right. There you go. We got a date set up. Let's do it. Let's do it. But I think that would be class. I think it would just be something really cool. We can just advertise to you guys when we're gonna when we're gonna do something, do some kind of live stream, and we'll just have some fun. Sounds good to me. I'm in. Same. Although it's gonna be difficult to talk about it on the next show, so maybe we'll just have to keep it to what we've been playing. We won't have a whole section about it. No, no, definitely not. But that's everything for me. I do want to kind of inform you guys that. The game collection has come through again. Vanguard just arrived on my door. We're recording this on Thursday the 4th of November, so we're recording it a day earlier than we normally do. A day before Vanguard comes out, I've got it. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, listener. Trust me, I will be playing it as soon as we finish this podcast. So next episode, I will be filling you in on how it stands up. And so on that bit of news, it's time for us to move into quick news. Quick news. Quick news. So, the PlayStation Plus titles for November have been announced. Firstly, we have Knockout City for PS4 and PS5. First Class Trouble for PS4 and PS5 as well. Two PS5 games, big. Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, PS4 title. And also free PSVR games. We have The Persistence, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, which is fantastic. And until you fall. Quick news. If you're mental and you don't listen to the music that the developers have intended on video games, and you don't have Spotify, you can now listen to Apple Music on PlayStation. <laughs> 
quick news. Returnal has had an update, and finally, what people want has happened. We've now got a suspend cycle, so you can pause the cycle and resume at a later time. <laughs> you really enjoyed that one, did you, Spence? You really enjoyed the kazoo? That really caught me off guard, mate. <laughs> I, I wonder if that I really doing, caught me like, off guard. Like just like need a puzzle or whatever, right? No, I was just like, I was like, what am I going to do? And I remembered, oh, I got kazoos. So, sorry, listener. Sorry, listener. This is what happens when you've got a three-year-old. This is you just got random instruments around the house. Uh, anyway, yeah. So going back to it, Returnal, we got a suspend cycle. So it means that if you're having a, a crazy killer run, you can now save and come back to it and resume where you left off, which is great for those that really want that. Uh, the good thing about it as well is that you can't really save scum it. I, I know people have found a way around it, but it's designed to not save scum. So when you load it up, that's the end of that save. Um, and, and that's it really um, and you've got a full photo mode and I've been really enjoying seeing people post their pictures up because that game is stunning when everything's flying about the place and I'll look forward to seeing yours now quick news just had to find that sorry lads I don't know I just want you you doing something reminded me of something stupid and I wanted it I don't even know minute. there we go Warner Bros so Warner Bros. are apparently working on their own Smash Bros-esque platform fighter. If true, expect Batman vs. Gandalf or Shaggy vs. Fred Flintstone in the near future. I'm a fan of platform fighters, so I'll definitely keep my eye on this in the future. Quick, um, quick, um, quick, um, quick news. Sony has formed the label PlayStation PC, specifically for its gaming PC operations. This signals that Sony now intends to take PC gaming seriously. Qu -qu 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 Quick news! At the end of the previous Dark Pictures game, they always show a trailer for the next one, and House of Ashes was no different. The next Dark Pictures game and the end of Season 1 is the game called The Devil in Me. It looks very sore-ish. And it's giving me proper slasher vibes rather than something supernatural, which is different from the rest of the series. The trailer for the rest, of, the trailer for the next one is online for you to view. Check it out; looks really fun. Hope you're ready for the sickest platypus impression you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Quick news! It's a fucking cat. Nah, oh, it might be. Yeah, a little bit of a pee, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see Agent P? No, you know. No. Finish some food? No, mate. Before my time. <sighs> you semi-aquatic egg lay in mammal of action. All right, yeah, yeah, okay. Amy Hennig, who wrote for Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, was rumoured to be working on a new project with Skydance Media back in 2019, and it's recently been confirmed to be a Marvel game. Though it hasn't been confirmed what type of game or featuring which character, I think it begs the question, are we getting too many Marvel games? Quick new... Quick new... Quick news! Quick news! Gorilla has given us some insight into Aloy's new abilities, and we'll all be using those in the future Forbidden West. The game is stunning! So make sure you go and check out that video. It'll be in the description in the podcast. <laughs> That's long news, hurry up. <laughs> quick news, quick news. <laughs> PUBG's parent company has acquired Unknown Worlds, the studio behind Subnautica. They say they'll continue to act as an independent studio, making what they want, when they want. With a safety blanket of a bigger budget, and to be honest, if it's true, this is just good news all round. Now, for the moment, the studio is hard at work on updates for Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero, while also develop a new genre-defining game that is expected to launch in early access next year. Quick news, that's it. Sony sells its Game Show Network, or GSN, game studio to Scopely for $1 billion. 
The one bill, which is a 50-50 split of cash and Scopely stock, will make Sony a significant minority shareholder in the gaming company. Game Show Network develops mobile and online casino games, and it didn't quite fit in with Sony's larger gaming strategy with PlayStation. Zoom! Quick news. Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 have been delayed, with no set release date, as they are currently both set for 2022. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them later than that. As with Diablo 4, there's been a recent change to the director, who was let go back in August due to allegations of sexual harassment. What's that? Is that a bird? Is it a plane? No. It's quick news. Sony have started flying in PlayStation 5 consoles to meet demand. So, for Joseph Thomas and all those people that really can't be bothered to look for a PlayStation, you shouldn't have hard to look this Christmas. He is hoping there's enough stock to meet demand. And that is all the quick news for this week, guys. So it's time to move it into Rumour Has It. Kick it! Wake up with a rumor and you don't want to go. You ask if it's confirmed and they still say no. Love that jingle. Love that jingle. So boys, we've only got one rumor of the evening. Surprise, surprise, you usually have more. But rumor has it, even though... The latest Call of Duty game, Call of Duty Vanguard, isn't even out yet. I know Davey has it, but it's not technically out. The next Call of Duty game's already been leaked. Have you boys seen anything about this? Yeah, I have. And it sounds pretty off-brand for Call of Duty. So what have you learned so far then, Spence? And we'll see if we can sync our thoughts up a little bit before bringing in Phil. Okay. Well, all I've heard so far from reading this article is that it's a much more, like, gritty game. They're going a lot more gruesome and gory and trying to make you feel bad about your kills, I suppose. Because the one thing they mention is that enemies won't die immediately. They'll call out for their mothers, hallucinate, and convulse before dying. I'd feel bad. I mean, what is this? Is this fucking Last of Us? It's in- it's crazy. It's insane. It's actually insane. I mean, the things the things that I've heard so far is that the there's like a morality system. So much like um, uh, in the GameSpot article I've read, it, it mentions uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption. Obviously, that doesn't mean anything to me. So I'm going to go base it around something I do know, which is like infamous. Um, so like a morality system whereby, you know, you kind of make your choices and, and that goes from, you know, and, and it goes where it goes. But also the guns jamming so much like Far Cry 2 and that fucking pissed me off in Far Cry 2. Now, the story wise of this is rumored to be, obviously we know already it's been confirmed that it's a direct follow up from 2019's um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which was a fantastic story. An absolutely incredible single-player narrative. So following up from that is great. That's really, really welcome. The only thing is, I like my Call of Duty to be arcadey. The hardest I want it going is like the No Russia mission in Modern Warfare 2. I don't, I don't need it to go to the point where I'm seeing people, you know, squirming around with their entrails falling out, crying for their mother. I, I don't need that here. Right, but if someone's guts are hanging out and they're calling for the mum, wouldn't it be class to teabag them? <laughs> How, what would that do for your morality then, at that point? I, I mean, I don't know. At that point, I think the game ends and they say, you fucked it. You're, a, you're an actual psychopath. You're a monster, <laughs> yeah. The police just burst through the door. They're like, we got another one, we got another one. <laughs> It's, it's just, to me, though, it just seems so off-brand for what Call of Duty is. Call of Duty is all about, you know, you're running along, along a rooftop, there's explosions every two minutes, you know, you're chucking a grenade, uh, sliding through, like, a door, and then taking out, like, four different people. And, and that's what Call of Duty is to me. It's not this hyper-realistic thing. 
and that just it interests me i'm not gonna lie this does sound really really interesting um and it is nice when she used take risks which is something that we talked about on the podcast quite a lot you know she was taking it in a different direction for what they're normally known to do so it will be a brave decision for call of duty to, to straddle this line and obviously the multiplayer isn't going to be changed they're not going to be changing that this is more for the single player story than anything else but it does have me interested but it also has me worried now, Phil, I know you're not a massive Call of Duty fan. You, I mean, you played Call of Duty back in the day with me. What does this do for you, this kind of this kind of change in direction? Would this be something that would get you into the series? Um, from what you guys are saying, it sounds like they're taking a more kind of realistic uh, approach to uh, Call of Duty, which, to be fair, I, I quite welcome. I, I, I like a bit of change. And it seems like I don't want them just releasing the same thing over and over again. They need to innovate, and I quite like change. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd be very much for up for uh, giving this a try. But my question is, with what you've been explaining, is it a step too far too early? I personally would say so, yeah. I would say this is such a, such a change that is it even Call of Duty still at that point? You exactly. know, to go, to go this hard into it like you can tell a political message you can tell some hard-hitting stories without it going to last of us levels of goriness and extreme extreme suffering you know in last of us's world it makes sense if everyone just fell over in last of us it would be weird whereas you know you bash someone's skull in with a brick in last of us, it's visceral and I don't know. I don't know if I want to see a grenade and see someone explode into like a million pieces. I, I, I don't know. I, I just think that's going to not vibe with me. I'm, I'm the same as you, Davey, right? My COD experience and my perception of COD has always been it's an arcade shooter. You know, you run along, shoot someone in the head. You might see a bit of blood now and again, but ultimately they just disappear and they respawn and they're back in the map, right? But for that to jump, I know we're talking about the story here, but for that to jump, to the point where I'm actually seeing blood and guts like spilled over the floor, then I'm going to start thinking about, should I be killing these people? And maybe that choice maybe comes into it a bit more, you know, ultimately it's yes, because we're online and fuck everybody's mums. I'm going to kill everyone. But, and it's hard, of course, like who cares? Right. But to see that I might question it a bit more. And you guys quite an interesting one. When we're talking about the morality system, I know we touched on this uh, last episode about China and them not liking people having that choice. How's that going to work, guys? That's a fantastic question. Um, shit, I don't fucking know. I'm not Chinese. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's a fantastic question. And I suppose this is one of the things that kind of goes against it a little bit in my eyes. I, I don't believe this rumour personally I, I i don't believe it i believe that it's a cartel story i think they could do a lot with that especially with the influences of um uh, that they've listed in this article which is quick google on this now pull up this article and tell you what they're rumored to have been influenced from i don't have a fucking clue nothing else to do so that's all that's Google. Right, so what they're saying is that it's, <laughs> this is nuts to me. This is what it says directly from GameSpot here. New information, new information suggests the campaign will take inspiration from movies like Traffic, No Country for All Men, and Cicero. And it's described as gritty and unrelenting. Like, those movies are dark. Well, No Country for All Men is, is, especially is gruesome. And... I can get the vibes from it, right? Because you could tell a really, really good story. You could get like a a Far Cry level villain in a story like this, and it'd be really effective for Call of Duty. Just like Modern Warfare 2's campaign was. That had some amazing twists in it, a really great story. And to be fair, the last two Call of Duty games that I played in Modern Warfare and um, last year's Cold War, the stories there were great. So I think having it themed around this environment would work really, really well. It's just I'm going back to that hyper-realism. I, I just cannot see that here. Unless, like you said, Phil, it's an option that maybe you don't have to go lethal. 
maybe you don't have to kill everyone. Maybe it's a case that you can do it stealthy. Maybe they're totally changing Call of Duty. But to me, with a studio the way they pump these out every three years, these games, is that enough time to radically introduce all these different gameplay elements into Call of Duty? Probably not. Sure, you've got stealth missions when, like, um, all gillied up, and um, there's always one stealth mission. But the stealth isn't exactly much. So to get it so that you can go full non-lethal or something of that nature, so you're not just murdering people left, right, and center, and creating donut holes in the center of their chest with a shotgun, I, 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 I'm just having a hard time. I mean, where are you falling down on this, Spence? Are you actually believing this to be true, or are you falling on a similar line of thinking to me? I think it's all true. However, I don't think it will end up in the final release of the game. So I think everything that's been stated in this so far is probably true, and that probably is what they've found. But it's so much. It's so different. I don't think it'd matter too much. The guns jamming is what's important, but if that's campaign only, that's fine. I'd imagine that only happened in certain scenarios or certain cutscenes, and that's fine. The gore is completely fine to be in the game, because since Call of Duty 5, I think, you've had limbs being blown off. World at War, you literally had your limbs exploding. Now, if you get hit by a grenade, you turn to slush. It even happens Yeah, now. but that's different from, you know, shooting someone in, this, in the face and seeing their, like face actually like contort into their body like it is on the last of us right like see their actual like he- like the skin rip off their face like in the last of us it, you know you, you're not getting to the point where you're going for a stab kill in core duty instead of it just being a k- and they go, instead of that it's like a like holding their holding their neck right with blood all dripping out and they're like staggering looking at you like uh, uh, uh. You're not getting that, right? Like, it, it's not fucking... Tell my wife I loved her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> and you're like, oh, Jesus, I'm so sorry. And he's like... And then someone else comes up, Roy! Not Roy! You know, like they always are in The Last of Us. Oh, you, you bastard, you killed Roy! His mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was his last day in work. He just he just I retired. I got a family back home. <laughs> and I'm going to marry that girl. <laughs> not anymore, you're not. Just teabags him. While he blows his fucking skull off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shock to the face. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your mum. <laughs> <laughs> See, other than the dialogue lines, dialogue lines, you're going to be running past people, teabagging them, shooting more people. You'll ignore those. <laughs> They're funny. They're not that deep. People getting shot in the head and seeing their head cave in, you're not going to see that unless you go in photo mode during the shot. Let's be honest. It, it depends, doesn't it? What if someone, like... This one, I'm, I'm taking it probably to, like, the total extreme here. What if somebody, like, you killed... You called you, you're like a super soldier, right? So you've wiped out a, a fucking platoon. There's one guy left, Leroy, right? And he's like, do you know what? Fuck this. I'm paid minimum wage. He just chucks his gun down. He's like, I'm off. I'm out. And and then you could just walk up to him. You just fucking kneecap him. Oh, please, no. I used to be... A, I used to run track. And then you shoot his other leg out. Oh, God! Like, I don't want this. I just want to be able to throw a knife in from across the map and walk away. Nah, I'll shoot his kneecaps. That's fine with me. You're a savage. Spencer, that is the most sadistic take I've ever heard. You just said, imagine going into photo mode as he takes a shot, right? Who's doing that? Who's shooting That's what the I shotgun mean. and then going That's into photo I mean. mode, twisting it around so you see the bullets really penetrate his skull and his brains blow out the back of his head? Like, that's disgusting. Come on, we're not really going to get to that stage, are we? That's exactly what I mean. The only people that this, your head caving in through a bullet, or due to a bullet, you're only going to notice it if you go in the photo mode. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be playing multiplayer, getting some trophies. It's fine. So you're, you're kind of buying this then, Spence. You reckon this is something that's actually going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen. I think the rumor's legit. But it won't stay in the game for launch. Okay. And what about yourself, Phil? Where are you kind of falling down on this one? Well, Davy, I'm glad you asked. I don't think there's any smoke without fire with this. Remember, cast your mind back to the outrage of that airport, airport scene when you go in and you murder all those citizens. People went crazy over the game and there was so much bullshit written about it in the press and the mainstream media. Maybe this is just a reaction because technology has moved on so far, and we know the power of the PlayStation 5. Games look stunning now. 
So maybe it's just hyper-realistic because the PlayStation 5 is hyper-realistic. Maybe that's just, you know, uh, kind of echoing our times, if you like. It's just showing off the power of the PlayStation 5 and what it can potentially do with games. I suppose the, the, inter- the human body is an interesting thing. So it's always good to see the inside of a human body while you pepper them full of an AK-47. So I suppose maybe, maybe there is something there. Maybe, maybe that's what they're doing in the new Core Duty. It's not a case that you need to have more destructible environments. You need to be able to leap over obstacles. Now it's just a case of you can shoot someone straight in the lung and you can listen to them as they slowly gurgle on their own blood. Sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I don't believe this at all. Uh, not at all. I, I think a story, definitely blood and guts, people crying for their mother. No, I cannot see it. Will I play it regardless if it is? Yeah, definitely, because it doesn't bother me. But it will just feel totally strange for Call of Duty. And that was our only rumour today. So guys, do you know what time it is? What time is it, David? It's topic time. Topic time. Right, guys, for our first topic of tonight, we're going to talk about the PlayStation State of Play. This happened on the 27th of October. Um, so last week, I believe. Um, did you guys catch it at all? I watched it, yeah. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, great. I don't believe you. David, did you catch the show? I did, yeah. I actually didn't watch it on the day, which is quite surprising. Normally, I'm... I'm there, locked in, ready to go from the off. And I think, because when we spoke about it on the last podcast episode, none of us were overly excited going into this. We all had quite, you know, tempered expectations, even though in listening back to last episode, we said some crazy shit that was going to come up. And spoiler alert, none of it did. Uh, You know, we were talking about like Elden Ring. We were talking about like all different things that could potentially come up. And in my defense, it came out like... A few days uh, later. A week Come later. On. But yeah. That's a shot. <laughs> That's not sure. Well, you ain't all doing shots. There's no shot. <laughs> I was going to say, Davey, I didn't see you doing all the peppy lols in the chat there. So uh, yeah, you actually missed out on the day when it came out. Um, but guys, personally, I didn't really enjoy it that much. There wasn't too many games that had, you know, a lot of interest for me. Um, but I'd like to get your rankings um, before we dive into this uh, little section of the show. Um, so out of 10, what are we scoring it straight off the bat, guys? Spence, do you want to go first? Sure, mate. <sighs> Fuck <it. laughs> I want to say two, two out of 10, but I'll give it a three. I'll give it a three because one game, don't know if you want me to say it yet or not, one game saved it for me. And made it a three instead of a two. <laughs> Didn't save it much. Davey, what are we saying? I'm going to go for a middle of the road on this one. I'm going to go for a five out of ten. And oh, wow. the reason why I'm going for a five out of ten is because I always think about it that a conference should be like a shotgun blast, right? Not every pellet's going to hit, but the ones that do, that's a good time, right? Well, obviously, if you're on the receiving end of the shotgun, that's not good at all, right? That's actually really bad. But uh, not not in the latest card. That'd yeah, it'd be, be really bad for you. But for me, there was a few things that actually stood out to me that I thought, well, that looks quite interesting. And I suppose that was all this was really for me, was it was something to kind of gauge my interest and something for me to think, hmm, I'll keep my eye on this. I'll see where this develops. Nothing that I was like overly crazy excited for, but I went in with such low expectation that I came out of it just a, a total meh. I wasn't disappointed because I didn't expect there to be anything there. It was, wasn't great, but there were some things that I did quite like. So I'm going to go for a 5 out of 10 on this one. What about yourself, Phil? What are you thinking? Well, we talked about your expectations last last show, and they were pretty high. Well, well so... I, I mean, come on. I was spitballing. <laughs> <Come> on. <laughs> I was saying there was no point in this entire conference, and it turned out that there wasn't really. Um, but yeah, my, my guesses were all wild in comparison to what was actually shown. I think all our guesses were wild, definitely. Um, but for me, yeah, I'll, I'll sit in the middle. I'll, I'll just go four out of 10. I, I didn't love it, but at the same time, I didn't hate it. There was a couple of things in that did quite interest me. So to discuss the games, I want to play Shagmari Avoid with you guys. It's a, it's, 
It's a setup we've used many times on the show before, and I think it's been quite interesting the way we uh, sort of rate our games. I know there was 10 uh, titles mentioned throughout the uh, Let's Play, so one of them is unfortunately going to get left out, so that's probably the weakest title, or probably the one we don't hate so badly, because the Avoid would be the one we definitely don't want to play. Spencer, why don't you start me off with your Marry? So this is your best game of the conference, well, of the conference, of the state of play. So, I thought for me, one game in this conference, the one game that made it a 3 out of 10 rather than a 2 out of 10 was a shoe in for me to be my Marry. But there's another game that caught my eye, and it's a game that I forgot about because I heard about it a long time ago. Oh, but no, I'm going to stick with my original. Maybe it'll come up in my, in my shag. I don't know. The original game I was going to go with is Bug Snacks. Oh, you fucker. You absolute fucker. <laughs> Bug Snacks got an announcement, which is brand new free DLC called The Isle of Big Snacks, which is Bug Snacks, but bigger. I never realized how much I missed Bug Snacks, because when I was done with it, I, I was grateful. I was like, it's done. I've got the platinum. It's finished. But now that I'm finished with it, I want to go back. After seeing more bug snacks, I never thought I would see bug snacks get in my life. I thought that was it, uninstalled, gone, wiped off the face of the earth. But I saw, they showed it state of play, and I thought, I'm hyped. It actually felt like I was watching a Last of Us trailer or something. I was so excited, I don't Mate, know why. Honest to God, as soon as that music kicked in, I just felt this kind of wave of just like kind of nostalgia almost of how excited I was when I first got the PlayStation 5 and I played bug snacks through. I adore that game. I really, really, really enjoyed my time with it. And hearing that music just got me hyped to go back in and just catch some giant bungers. I was actually beyond excited, which I never, like, just like you said, I never would have expected that. I thought it would be like, oh, I can't be bothered. Whereas all I was going from my head is, oh, I can't wait to see what the new trophies are. Can't wait to see what they're going to do. <laughs> and we gotta, we got to give props where, where props are due here. They weren't going to add trophies to, to this update, but Greg Miller tweeted them. And sure, he may have terrible takes on the game that can't be mentioned, Village, but he did tweet them and say, you better put some trophies in this. And they, and they said, yeah, if you, if you want them. So they're going to put them in. So we're getting a full trophy list for it. So I am super, super hyped to get back in and catch some big snacks. I take it you're not too interested, Phil. You missed this on uh, on its original release because you didn't have PS Plus at the time, if I remember rightly. I still don't understand what Bug Snacks is. It just looks <laughs> like some weird, cheap-ass Pokemon Snap game. I don't understand it. Like, why is one of their hands like a burger or an apple or and their leg is like, I don't know, a banana or a sausage? None of it makes sense to me. And I don't need it to make sense for me because it looks trash. Sorry, boys. Trash oh, Well, I'll tell you what, that is a trash take that you got there because you are missing out. Because feeding those little creatures assorted snacks and seeing them transform into some eldritch creature... It's just a satisfaction that I cannot describe in words. Mate, Davey's two for two on games he's given you. This year, your birthday's next week. What game do you think you're getting? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope to God it's a bug snacks. Bug snacks, baby. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, moving on. Let's move this on because this is a bug snacks loving tonight. And I, I can't take any more of that shit. Um, for me, my, uh, my marry, I'll go next. My marry was uh, King of Fighters 15. I thought that was relatively interesting um, with our background in fighting games, guys. Um, that was the only one that really sort of made my eyebrow go, hmm, that's relatively interesting because it was quite a poor show. You know, I gave it a four out of 10, but King of Fighters, yeah, why not? And they've got an open beta going uh, between the 19th and the 22nd of November. Uh, eight characters to try out with the online matchmaking. Uh, so why not? Why not give it a try? You know, jump in. Let's have a few sets, lads. I gotta say, I'm agreeing with you on that, and you guys are really pissing me off here. Me going third on this because you're just nicking everything that I got as my backups now. Um, yeah, do you know this is the first time that a King of Fighters game actually interests me, and I think it's because the art style change. That art style to me just looks really clean. It just reminds me of Street Fighter Four. Uh, there's something about it that just gives me that kind of aesthetic look. 
I, I am, I'm about this. I'm definitely about this. I want to give this a try. I want to see what it's like. I've never played a, a King of Fighters game apart from a couple of times where you and me have been pissed up, Phil, and you have one around your house. And we played it for a, a couple of minutes and then went back to Street Fighter. But as I'm kind yeah, of in between true. games right now in terms of fighting games, I, I'm still playing a bit of Mortal Kombat, but nothing too crazy. I could do with trying this and giving it a go and seeing if it works. And And to be fair... With what they've showed here in terms of having an open beta test, it's a perfect chance there to be able to see if it's a winner or if it's something that I'm going to bin off. Yeah, these open beta tests haven't fared well, have they, with us currently? The last couple we've tried have been pretty much like a solid no across the board. Um, but this game comes out 17th of February next year. That's the date they're uh, sort of publicizing. Uh, so it'd be good yeah, jump in the open beta. Let's have a couple of sets, lads. Let's see what it's about because potentially next year that might be our fight. I mean, the thing about it is that's coming out, that open beta is perfect timing because a week later or two weeks on from there and we're in the middle of the next death month. So, you know, we're going to be then fighting off Elden Ring and we're going to be fighting off Horizon. So it's going to be a savage savage time towards the end of that month so they've timed that really really well and it's the day after my birthday so hopefully it gives me some good birthday vibes because i'll be 33 then so maybe uh maybe who knows maybe 33 is the year i get into king of fighters we'll have to wait and see Anyway, Davey, um, so what would your uh, marry be on that list? I think we've taken your two marries already. We've stolen your girls. How does that yeah, feel? I'll tell you what, I thought I had a tight-knit relationship with Bug Snacks, especially, and she left me. And then I started the kids, so the kids were fine. And then the second wife, King of Fighters, comes in, and they just take the kids out from underneath me, so now I'm just a husk. I got nothing. I'm on the streets. I'm a waste of a man. And there's only one woman that can pick me up from the gutter and make me feel better about myself. And that's Little Devil Inside. So Little Devil Inside looks great. I don't understand what the fuck's going on, but I quite like that. All I know so far is that that art style is beautiful. And when they were doing the travel between the different like kind of towns, and it was going to like a... a like a bird's eye view of that and then zooming in then when something was going to happen along that journey. I really enjoyed that. I really liked the look of that. And it's just got me intrigued. So the same way that I am about Stray uh, or Sifu with games that I'm going to keep an eye on and see what happens and kind of see where it develops from here. That's my relationship with this game at the moment. And we'll we'll see where it goes from here. But in terms of making a first impression, it was a really, really good first impression. I am very excited. What about you guys? Any interest for it? Yeah, it, it would have probably been my shag if uh, it was still on the list because it, it did look relatively interesting. Do you, do you feel like this game is, is going to be like sort of full retail? Do you think it's, it's a PS Store kind of game or do you think it's, it's, it's down with the PS Plus kind of offerings? I, I still don't like that you seem to put stuff into the PlayStation Plus categories if it's shit when you do get some absolutely stunning. I love that tennis game we got <laughs> last month. That was lovely, that was. That was so good. Like a, like a year-old tennis game. Brilliant. All right, okay, yeah, we've had a couple of duff months, okay? But we've got Kingdoms of Amal uh, Amalar this month, and that's going to be a good one. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, but no, I, I think it's going to come in at like a budget price. I think it's going to be like a 30 quid, maybe a 25, um, and I think that would be a great price for it. If it's full retail price, they're sending it out to die. You know, unless there's something really interesting here that we haven't seen so far. But to me, it looks like that that budget kind of mid-level indie kind of price. And I'm all about that, like Fist was. Yeah, I reckon I'd agree with you on that. If it goes any higher, I wouldn't be interested. But if it comes at that budget price or if it is included in PS Plus, if for some unknown reason I get another year subscription from it from the gods, who knows will buy it me next? Uh yeah, I, I definitely crack on and give that a go. How about yourself, Spence? Um, I mean I've not really seen a lot other than what was shown at the state of play. The art style's really cool. It's a really cool art style. The graphics look actually really nice. I don't have a clue what the fuck's going on. It looks fun. <laughs> it looks fun. I don't know. It's definitely not... I don't even think it warrants a shag at the moment, but that's because I don't understand enough yet. Sometimes there's Fair. danger shags, though, where you don't understand what's going on. Those are some of the best ones. Where you're too out of it... It's true. 
And then you think, oh, if you were sober, you'd probably talk yourself out of it, thinking, no, 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 this is definitely, I'm going to catch something from this. And then you come out, you get checked out the day after, everything's all on the on the up, and you feel better about yourself. And maybe this is one of those games. Well, as God taught us, shagging someone else's wife is wrong. Okay, so you can't go behind Davy's back and shag his wife on this one, unfortunately, Spence. But what I'm going to ask you next, who is your five o'clock, oh, sorry, who is your 5 a.m. girl? Who are you taking home from the club to shag in that list? Right. Well, mine, my shag, was a contender for my marry as well. Because I've actually, I heard about this game a long time ago. This is a YouTuber called Iron Pineapple, who does Souls-like videos. Um, and he's done, like, deep dives into From Software's past and stuff. And he does a series where he plays Souls-like games that he finds on Early Access on Steam or games that are recommended. And one of the Souls-like games he played was called Death's Door. And Death's Door was shown in that state of play. And you basically, you play as like a little bird kind of thing and it's a top-down kind of view. But it's a Dark Souls-esque game. And it just looks really like cute and cool, I suppose. Like, it's still just the difficulty of Souls. With a bit more charm. A, I think. a lot of people are really excited about this coming over to the service because it's been on Xbox for a while, hasn't it? If I remember rightly, I if think I so, remember yeah. rightly, I think it's one of the most highest rated games on Xbox. And so, yeah, it's, wow. it's in there. It's in their top five. That's probably quite easy, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not too hard at the minute. Like any game with a bit of substance, just <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. It's not too hard on Xbox, to be fair. Bless them. But um, yeah, so that is definitely one to keep an eye on, and that certainly. This is going to be a running theme, I think, here, listeners. That was going to be in my shag list as well. So that's <laughs> gone now. That's gone. My 5 a.m. bird, as Phil put it, is gone out the window. She's gone off with another man. I'll tell you what, as as shit as this data play was, I'm marrying my shag <laughs> I've actually, I've actually come out of this on top. You're going first, mate. You just fucked us over this time. Just fucked me over anyway. What about yourself, Phil? Who are you... Uh, who are you taking home at this ungodly hour? Well, I don't have to take <laughs> anyone home, Davey, because that girl is already spread wide downstairs on my living room <laughs> table. Her name is First Class Trouble. I already own that bitch. It was part of PS Plus, and it's that weird role-playing game that's a little bit like Among Us if they had budget. I really want to play that game, guys. I think we should all crack on one night, and let's, let's three-way this girl. I, I mean, I'll definitely check it out. I'll definitely check it out and see what see what it's about. I mean, I'll I'll chuck it in anything to be fair if it's if it's going. So why not? We'll have a little look. We'll have a little mingle. We'll have a little taste. We'll see what it's all about. And if it's trash, then we can go back to Among Us, I guess. I mean, that's coming out soon. We're not going to play that. We're not. Gonna yeah, play nah. That. But yeah, I, I'm up for giving it a check out for sure. It looks it looks interesting enough. I think the only problem with that game was. The way it was presented to us was fucking awful. And that's what kind of takes it out of being anywhere near my list is because that gameplay that was shown between that, that bloke and that woman was so bad. It was oh, dry, wasn't God. it? Oh, it, well, God. It wasn't conveyed. No, it was I terrible. Do. It was terrible. It made it seem like, oh, no. Oh, are you going to walk onto this ladder? Oh, please don't kill me. Oh, I won't kill you. I'm your friend. Oh, he hit... Yeah, I hit the lever. He's dead now. Ha, 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 ha. Boom. Trailer ends. I was like, oh, jeez, why? Oh, my God. I can't believe you hit the lever. <laughs> you were the imposter all along. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. You're just making fun of a foreign <laughs> woman at this point. It's just... It's just... Yeah, it was, it was too dry. It was too dry. But, yeah. Well up for how, checking out. How about you, Spence? Davey's in on the threes up. Are you in? Oh, mate, always, yeah. If you boys are involved, get me in. Doesn't matter what it is. Expect the invite later on tonight. Davey, where are you picking? So we're getting towards, like, bottom of the barrel kind of territory here. So this is something that I'm not... It's your territory, <laughs> it, is, mate. it is, mate. This is in the, uh, in the old adage from the book of Jersey Shore, the holy Bible that it is. I'm jumping on the fucking grenade here, boys, okay? Because I'm going for We Are OFK. And the reason why I've gone for We Are OFK is because, one, is this a real band? I don't understand. I could not tell. 
Yeah, I've gone. I've gone on their Twitter since, and they got like four and a half thousand followers, and everything seems to be like as if they are a real band. But I've never heard a single thing about them, right, ever in my life. But the reason why this actually did tickle my fancy to a tiny extent is because I really do enjoy these kind of these story pick your own kind of adventure games, and it does kind of give me slight vibes of like Life is Strange. So there could be something there. If I'm honest, this is going to be a me drunk out of my out of my mind, bonged out of my L, and I've got no option but to shag someone or die. And 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 this is where we're going with this list. Yeah, I wasn't sure either, Dave, if they're a real band, but I do remember this band or or, or a band that looked like them in some previous PlayStation, either State of Play or or, or, or some kind of publication. I, I do recognise them from somewhere else. This isn't the first time we've seen We Are OFK. But it seems very strange that it's a story-driven game, but you have options. So if it's a real band, obviously you might want the band to do terribly, which probably wouldn't reflect well if it was a real band. You know, say say for example, we were we were doing the the Metallica game, for example. You aren't suddenly going to get Lars Ulrich to like murder the bass player, are you? <laughs> right? That isn't going to go. That isn't going to wash, is it? You'd always want them to progress and to sell a lot of records. So I don't know how this game's going to work. I'll tell you exactly how it works, mate. The story is going to play out the same regardless of what you choose. It's just twenty years after the band retires, does the lead singer get sexual allegations or no? <laughs> that's when that's, that's when you choice. pick that he quits the band and he goes to work at activision as an option and it all just comes back Hello. around oh dear god oh dear god but yeah that's that's my that's the pick i've been left with here nice enjoy okay. it mate yeah, yeah great game enjoy cheers, it. Mate. cheers so guys we're on to our avoids there are four games left so the one that doesn't get picked, I definitely think we should give it a small mention right at the end because that's definitely the one we aren't even touching. That's the, even, that's the one we don't even want to touch. But for you, Spence, which one comes to mind? Which one aren't you touching? Which one are you avoiding? All right. Well, this is an easy choice for me, and I don't even have much to say about it. It's Cart Riders Drift, and I have nothing to say about it. The only reason I'm avoiding it is because I have Mario Kart. Why? Why would I? You know? Mario Kart's fantastic. It's the perfect version of a kart racing game. Well, it's, it's, Why would it's I play not Crash Team Racing, other? mate. I haven't even played Crash Team Racing. I thought you were going to say Sega or Star no, Racing. No, no. Crash Team Racing is actually good. I haven't tried it. I'd Great. love to try it. When, when you were watching the state of play and the first character appeared, did you think it was Mega Man racing? Because I did. that character definitely looks like Mega I'll Man. i tell you what I thought it was. I thought it was Mod Nation Race is going to make a comeback. I remember that game, yeah. I, I thought it was game, gonna be yeah. something similar to that. And it kinda of does give me that kind of vibe, but it could just be because it's a kart racer with no no one really recognisable on PlayStation. So maybe that's why I kinda of got that vibe. But I thought, oh it's Modern Nation. And I, I was never big into Modern Nation uh back in the day anyway. I was too far at Motorstorm's ass. So I, I never really got into it. Great sound. Great game. Great great series, great series. Killed before its time. But yeah, I, I'm not interested either. Just like you said, Spence, I mean, you know, Mario Kart's there, Crash Team Racing's there, hell, even Sega, All-Stars Racing's there. You've got options for kart races. I can't see this being one of my options. And I, yeah, no, wouldn't have made my list. Not for me either, Spence. Uh, I would be avoiding that one too. Um, but a game I'm also avoiding is Star Ocean The Divine Force. This game. 100% isn't me. It's just more weeb shit from Square Enix. Fuck that game. I ain't bothered. It ain't gonna even register. So that's my avoid. What did you think about the classic style of trailer where it's just random people speaking random bollocks lines of dialogue with, where then something on screen is happening? So it'd be like an explosion, like a star exploding. It'd be like, we need to take over this town massive exploding star and then it'd be like i don't know like a roller coaster going through and someone saying can you pick up my groceries at 11 a.m please from the supermarket it's like completely just random bollocks thrown in and then just a close-up of like some some like anime character being like <gasps> and then and then like a bit of text the awakening with like a sparkle and you're like fuck's going on fuck's going on 
it just ticked every box, didn't it? Did. It did. It, did. it was. It was every cliche in the book and all the cliches. It was like I, I was watching a kingdom. Mate, they're down on the that. floor. They're down on the floor clutching their fists like, I would have died if not for my <laughs> friends. <laughs> it's, it's literally, I thought I was watching another Kingdom Hearts trailer. Uh, and, you know, those, those few years where we had a Kingdom Hearts trailer, every single event was always painful for me. And it just brought back those kind of memories. I don't know why they think these kind of trailers are effective, but it just don't work for me. I completely agree with you totally in the bin shocker shocker of a trailer definitely not my cup of tea either i mean it looks like xenoblade on <laughs> playstation i didn't play the xenoblade on the switch so i'm good i think we all agree on that one uh davy you've got five nights of freddy's or death verse right uh, who are you who are you avoiding who am i avoiding i'm gonna avoid uh death verse and the reason why i'm going to avoid death verse is because i don't even remember what it even looks like it's so unmemorable Same. that i cannot even fucking remember it i remember that five night of freddy's trailer and it actually looked pretty decent i'm kind of i've got a lot of fatigue of watching five night of freddy's trailers because they've been at everything recently and i haven't ever played five night at freddy's I, I feel like i'm kind of missing out here if i'm not experiencing it but at least that's got some things that are more akin to my interest you know a bit of horror it looks at least interesting, whereas this, you know, this Death First thing, it just reminded me of that bollocks game that I was super excited about on PlayStation Plus a while ago. That um, oh, another classic. Oh on god, what was Plus. it called? That Chinese developed game. That I was all about Hunter's Arena Legends, oh. right? <laughs> Hunter's, Hunter's Arena. So Legends. hyped for that, and this gave me those vibes. And I do not want to remember that game at all. It painfully hurt me just then thinking about the name of that game again. So, no, this ain't for me. Nothing about it looks interesting. Combat looks dull. Yeah, super bland, super generic. That standard kind of... The Chinese games at the moment seem to have their own art style where it's like as if everything's like kind of hyper-realistic, but nothing looks real. I can't really describe it any other way than that. It's like the graphics... Silicon Valley, It's weird. It's like the graphics should look great because they, they kind of, at a glance, look good. And then the more you look at it, the more it just looks weird and bland and generic. And yeah, not for me at all. Totally in the bin. In my opinion, the weakest one on this list. Shocker. Absolute shocker. Totally agree with you. I think even if this was on PS Plus, I wouldn't be downloading it. I wouldn't even add it to my library. I have zero interest in this game. Sorry, Deathverse. How about yourself, Spence? Um... The gameplay-wise, honestly, I couldn't remember this game. Same as Davey, I couldn't remember it at all, so I've done a quick Google. Gameplay-wise, can't remember it, don't care. If I remembered it, if I liked it, I'd obviously remember. The announcers, the characters, the fat guy with the gold teeth, and then the woman who is clearly just a rip-off of the posh woman from Hunger Games. I like him. But I like Hunger Games, so that's why. So, it's a biased opinion. And that is it. I like the announcers. I'm not going to download the game. I'm not going to play the game. Unless it gets fantastic reviews. Even then, it's a fucking another Battle Royale. How many Battle Royales have we had in the past five years? I don't know, but it definitely warranted you getting really close to your mic for that. For that it did. Because it's 362. There's, there's more Royals. than anyone should ever possibly endure. And I think if so... There's, there's more Battle Royales than days in the year. You could play a different Battle Royale every single day and still not go for them. Mate, there's more Battle Royales than Final Fantasy there, games. There is there is more chance, right, of somebody getting through an entire year of playing every single Battle Royale and they finally get to this death first and this is the one that they jump off a cliff. Because I, I think this is how bad this game looks. To me, it just looks the most uninteresting, dull totally devoid of any artistic style game that i've seen i've never seen a game that just reminds me of just looking at a fucking wall and to me it's just i might as well just be looking at a wall and just bashing my fucking head with those realistic cod physics <laughs> and just obliterating my skull into nothing because i don't want this anywhere near me and the sheer memory of this game now coming back to me Flooding back to me is giving me Nam flashbacks. Fuck this game. Looks 
like a fucking stinker. I, you should not drink more often, Davy, because your statements when you're putting games down, you really <laughs> put them down. My God, if they're if the developers to death first are listening to this, they can't. They're Chinese. Suck your mum. Oh. They can't get access oh. to us, mate. They don't have internet. Remember? They'd be crushed. They'd be crushed. I was gonna say, I'm sure suck your mum's a universal too. Anyway, let's uh, let's let's leave death first. I'm sure there might be some people out there that will enjoy this game, but it just isn't for us. Um, the only the only game we haven't sort of mentioned tonight, I know, Davey, you touched on it, was Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, this is the security breach version. Did look relatively okay, I guess, um, but I've never been a, a Five Nights at Freddy's guy. Um, Davey, same same with yourself. Spence, is this anything you've ever delved into? Five Nights at Freddy's? Do you know what it is? I of course I know what it is. It was a freaking gaming phenomena for freaking for ages. It blew up insanely. Um Scary Breach, I remember it was actually announced with the PS5. I remember it wasn't announced to launch PS5, but when they showed off the PS5 with the games, they that's when they first showed off this game. Mm. I'm not a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's myself. I can see why people like it. Especially they mainly blew up because streamers played them. And that's why the Five Nights series blew up, because streamers played them, and it's just so fun. I've watched streamers play these games. It is really fun. So I'm definitely not going to play this myself, but I will gladly watch Soda Popping or something and stream it on Twitch. Bro, can you fill me in? Because I don't, I, don't, I don't even really know what it is. I know it's like a horror game, but that's yeah. all I know. I literally don't even know what kind of style it is. Is it? It's not survival horror, is it? It's not survival. Uh, I mean, kind of, I suppose. The original games were, uh, you were in a room. You were in a room doing, like, uh, the night shift security in a fun house. So, like, in a kid's arcade kind of thing. And they have these animatronic animals, obviously. Um, and at night, they would just be let loose. So you'd have to watch the doors, watch the battery and stuff, and make sure they can't get to you. You'd have to stay in the house, but every time you close the door or turn the light on or use the cameras, you're draining your battery. So you have to conserve your battery whilst also trying to check your surroundings, use your ears, use your eyes, figure out when they're coming for you. And then since then, now you can actually run around to the shop and move because it blew up so much. They have a budget. So you can actually run around the area and I guess they're going to be chasing you and following you and putting their fingers where they don't belong. <laughs> It's, I don't know. It sounds quite. It sounds actually really quite interesting. That does. I'm not going to lie. Maybe it's something I should check out at some point when we got you know nothing to play, and you know it's cheap enough. Maybe maybe something I'll actually have a look at because I feel like that's like a a cultural thing that's kind of passed me by. It's it's the same with Dead by Daylight. It's all those kind of streamer games that kind of maybe I'm a bit old for. Maybe I've got to start accepting that these days. You know, 37 next next week. I've, I've just missed these games. Five Nights by Freddy, Day by Dead, Daylight. Not a clue. Sorry, guys. Well, you're not alone there, mate, because maybe, maybe there is something to do with age, because, yeah, they definitely passed me by too. Listeners, I wouldn't mind actually knowing, are you, which of these games are you excited by? Which ones do you... <laughs> which ones do you give a shit about? Is there any? What did you think about the overall state of play? Write into the email, psretrust at gmail.com. I think we'll also post this out on Spotify as our question. So if you are a Spotify listener, uh, you can comment on the uh, on the listening itself. We'll also have start the conversation over on Reddit. The URL will be in the description. So please join us. Um, I know there's a couple of people chatting uh, right now. So click those links. It'll be in the description below. You can also let us know your opinion on a state of play on Twitter at MPSB Trust or any of our individual Twitter accounts if you kind of want a one-to-one -one conversation on the state of play about which games you like. If you agree with us, let us know. Our individual Twitters will be in the description below as well. Crawl into those DMs, baby. Oh, that's a bit mad for me. <laughs> oi, oi. Oi, oi. Okay, so for topic two, guys... Have you seen the hottest new gameplay on the streets? Just went live today. 15 minutes worth of pure Elden Ring beauty. Guys, there is a lot shown. A lot of different builds. A lot of different combat. You've got to see how the world works. you got to see kind of 
everything, really. You got to see a huge open doors about the kind of foundations, as they put it, of Elden Ring. Before we get into some specifics, I want to hear your top level thoughts. Phil, I want to come to you first because I know that you're not a massive fan of all these kind of like Dark Souls games and everything. Or have I got that wrong? I think you've just have totally offended me and all the listeners that back me up on this. I'm a massive Souls fan. You know that. Yeah, hello. You know about us, Bloodborne. You're crazy. I own that game. Come on. It's crazy. I suppose you did take down the Cleric Beast. So, you know, there is something there to big. that. That's a, a big achievement in, in gaming, that one. So what were your thoughts after seeing this? Are you interested? Well, I... I didn't watch it live or anything. Uh, I, I caught up just for the podcast. So I watched the uh, Maximilian Dude kind of commentary on it because I thought I'd need someone to sort of bring me into this Souls verse because I don't know all the references. I don't know all the backgrounds. Um, but my initial thoughts of the game, the game looks stunning. Those visuals, incredible. That blew me away to start off with, especially when he was walking over and, and you could see all the vistas. It was just beautiful, you know, from the colours, the lighting, and those magic effects when he was taking on that boss on the back of the horse, like quite early on, that was incredible. There was definitely a Kamehameha in there. I saw that, and that was beautiful, and that made me smile. I popped off that Kamehameha. I, I, I never play a spellcaster character in the Souls game, but seeing a Kamehameha, I was like, we, we just want, might want to start acting up. I was like, oh, I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to fucking do this. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that one. That was, that was hype to see that. But do you think then this, is, this has got you actually interested in it? Maybe got your, your little toe maybe just touching the water a little bit, maybe? Well, it, it all depends what other games come out around this time, doesn't it? And then I've got to make those choices because I know it's going to be a difficult couple of months around that sort of period. Couple of months, a month. Yeah, that month. Wait, that month. <laughs> that was... Yeah, but how long is this game going to be? It feels like a full blown RPG, doesn't it? It's like it's it's going to be a big one. What are we talking? We're going to be like, I know we're talking high level here, but like this is maybe eighty sort of hours. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, but before we dive into too much into the minutia on this, and I'll pick that I'll pick that up in just a moment, Spencer. What about yourself? What are you thinking about this? I mean, if Elden Ring, baby, is fucking Elden Ring. It's so sick. I'm, mate, I'm hype. I'm so hype. The, my only, like, I don't have any issues with it. Spellcasting seems strong, and it feels like it has to be strong, because they showed off the spellcasting during a fight with a dragon, and that dragon was flying all about the shop. So unless you're ranged or you have some hench fat weapon... Don't know what you're going to do. I feel like weapon switching is going to be very prevalent in this game. Also, the movement. The movement in this game is so different from Souls, and I know it's because of Sekiro. I know it is. Because the jump animation is exactly the same as Sekiro's. Obviously, you're not going to have the same crazy movement that is in Sekiro. With the grappling hook and such. I'm not sure what exactly is in Sekiro. Because I haven't played it myself. But it's a lot more than we have in Souls. Because in Souls, you have to be sprinting to jump. <laughs> I can't believe you haven't played uh, Sekiro yet. Yeah, I haven't. Oh no. my god, you'd love it. It's, it's I know. great. It's great. Note that one down, Davey. When Spencer's birthday? Yeah, I'll, I will note that down. You just borrow it off me, to be well, fair. I mean, yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> yeah, just borrow it from me. Just borrow it from me. <laughs> I'll get it tomorrow, mate. <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, and and I shouldn't be surprised that you um, you were going to be popping off for this one. What I liked in this, um, to give you my kind of high level thoughts, is that they showed a lot of different builds and a lot of their different styles of play throughout this entire thing, and they made that evident just by the costume changes. So I could identify how I am going to play this game because no matter. No matter what I saw, I saw some cool ass movement. I saw some really fast stuff. I saw some people using magic. I saw people, you know, back flipping around. My guy is going to be in a fucking suit of armor, massive suit of armor, cape on the back of him with a massive fuck off great sword. It happens every single time, every single one of these games. I cannot help it. It just happens. And what's his name going to be, mate? Barry Big Bollocks. Every time, every time Barry comes out, 
to play. He always starts off thinking, I'm going to spec into decks. And then I always spec into power, into power and endurance and just get my my ability to have fucking huge armor, massive tower shield, massive sword, and I just do not move. So there's no no kind of quick step in. There's none of this. There's no skill. There's no parry. <laughs> there's no there is it. You're going to do endurance metering. And, I, you know, I enjoy that too. But it, 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 it was interesting because it really showed to me the different styles that you can have with this game. Because a lot of the combat reminded me a lot of Bloodborne in terms of how the dodges were working. The dodges just reminded me so much of Bloodborne, especially when you got the... Um, there's an item that you can have in Bloodborne. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, it's like some kind of hunter's mist. But it basically... Oh, where it makes you invincible and you like... You get like an extended dash well. distance, like an inv- invisible kind of dash. You like dis- you disappear and reappear. And they were using that. And I was like, okay. And like the little quick steps, I was like, yeah, this is straight from Bloodborne. And then, like you said, a lot of the kind of forward momentum and the um, the running animations and, and how easy they were like kind of vaulting to and from things was, was Sekiro from the off. So I, I really got a lot from that, which I, I really, really enjoyed. So yeah, for me, my high level thoughts, super hyped for this. Can't wait to see more. But guys, I got something a little bit controversial that I'm going to say here. I didn't think graphically it looked great. I don't think it did. The only part that wowed me was when he went up towards the castle. That was the only part of it. I was like, holy shit, that castle looks incredible. And the and the use of shadow. The rest of it, I thought this is a massive step down from Demon Souls. I said to you, I remember saying this to you in the past. Elden Ring will not look anywhere near as good as Demon Souls. Demon Souls remake, that is PS5, isn't a FromSoft game. It's not FromSoft. All we need Elden Ring to be is an improvement from Sekiro and Souls 3. And from looking at it, when we first saw Elden Ring at the Summer Games Fest, when Geoff Keighley picked it up, he was like, it's finally fucking here. Yeah, it was. Oh, I'm so excited. When he first showed it off, I thought, I saw the gameplay and I was surprised it didn't look as good as Demon's Souls and I realised then that Demon's Souls is Bluepoint. It makes sense. Bluepoint's cracked. FromSoft's are cracked as well. But they're cracked at making games. From scratch. Bluepoint aren't. I mean, they might not be. I don't know. We don't know yet. We'll find out soon. Bloodborne 2. But I didn't expect Elden Ring to look as good as Demon's Souls. Anywhere near as close. As long as it looked better than Dark Souls 3 or Sekiro, I was happy. And to me, I think it does. Especially when they showed him jumping down, like, stone platforms. Those stone platforms looked fucking great. And like you said, that castle. Oh my god. What I thought as well when I saw that castle. So I'm going on a rant. I apologise. When I saw that castle, what amazed me about Souls games and FromSoft was that that castle would be the final, the massive build-up, the finale in Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Think about that. The game that's rated so highly. That's any area in a Souls game. Any area. That could be the opening. That could be the tutorial. Souls don't care. Every area they make is polished and stunning. Absolutely beautiful to explore. Whereas that castle would be the finale where everything else would be an open field in any other game. I completely agree with both of you. You know, Stormvale Castle, that looked absolutely incredible in that uh, little trailer. And I really like when things are a little bit real. You know, it, it just connected with the scenery. You genuinely thought that you'd be able to walk around that castle and have your own mini adventure in that castle because of the size of it when it came into shot. It was absolutely huge, wasn't it? And it, it just fit with the scenery so perfectly. And yeah, I agree with you. It looks stunning, guys. That castle, Stormvale. Yeah, it it looks super hype. And what I'm what I'm liking about it is that from what they showed, which wasn't, I suppose it it's kind of a a, a big in depth look, I guess. They showed so many different variances in terms of terrain and in terms of enemies that you'd encounter there. And what kind of weirded me out, right? And I think it's going to take a while. I think it's going to take until I actually play it before it actually really sinks in. That not everything wants to fucking murder you. 
because when he was when he was on the on the horse and he was scooting along by and there was like that carriage being drawn by those massive ogres that were like impaled through the chest and i thought oh fuck me they're gonna be savage right they're, this is gonna be crazy and, and they're not even aggroed when he's going straight past and i'm like oh oh but you don't know what level he would be at does that is that is that a thing in no souls the the higher level you get the like different aggro ranges do you No, have it's souls? all just like a default it's all just a default thing basically you can have um you can have a ring that reduces aggro range usually or mm-hmm. in demon souls if you two hand a heavy weapon <laughs> yeah such a weird glitch that is you're just invisible basically if you do that it's so weird to backstab everything <laughs> um but yeah i i, I think what the, the the part of it right there's loads of parts that i i popped off guys but i want to go back to what phil was talking about in terms of in terms of game length here because the thing that that blew my fucking tits off was when he was looking out over the open area and i thought wow this map's really big right and then he just goes into the map menu and just fucking keeps going off out 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 and i thought oh my god this is easily the biggest game they've ever made and it's a it is when you look at like a game series you're always kind of looking for where they take it next right if a game's set underwater are they next going to space are they going to a volcano right it's like that kind of evolution of of styles going forward and seeing this go from where they've gone from the from the demon souls all the way through the dark soul series bloodborne sekiro every single time has been an improvement it's been an improvement not not so much with bosses. I mean, Dark Souls 2 is the black sheep in this example. But you get where I'm going here, right? There's always been like kind of a steady improvement in terms of gameplay, in terms of what you can do. And this is just taking that evolution to the next level. Putting it in an open world, getting it so you've still got all the basics there of combat that makes Dark Souls look so appealing. But putting it in a fucking gigantic playhouse for you just to go and explore. And Phil, I, I, I mean, a normal normal dark souls run on your first time you're probably looking about 50 hours maybe depending on how how much you struggle on a normal run if you're an adept player 12 13 hours maybe max um on your first kind of run um this i I can't see it's been any shorter than 50 odd hours i can't see it but that that's just my take when when he was when he was scrolling through the map, I, I, I immediately thought, you know, this is the Dark Souls version of Skyrim, you know? They had that heavy focus on crafting, which they went into, and I think that's quite a new thing to the series as well, to be that in-depth with crafting items. So I thought, this is really where they're trying to take that game. And, you know, if they're careful, that could have layers upon layers upon layers that people will replay and replay and replay. And I think, personally, that's where they need to take the series. To add on to both of you saying about the game length, I whilst watching this, I realized, you know, there was one area where there was three windows and the middle window was smashed and that was the entry point. And then also in Stormvale Castle, they couldn't access the main gate. So they had to go around and jump up a little ledge and fucking then maneuver around the little ledge and to get into the castle. Yo, I'm getting lost in this game. I was, I literally, I watched him not go into the main gate, go around the corner and jump up this little thing. I was, I saw it and thought I would never, I would never have gone there. I'm, this game's going to take me 200 hours to complete. Thank God they mentioned that there's a little guide that could tell you where to go. Because there is that, or you can ignore it, they said. Because obviously Dark Souls, you can go wherever you want. But there is a linear path if you choose to follow it. Yeah, you almost have what's like known in uh, um, Zelda is like Navi, Navi yeah, kind of like do, taps you on the head and like tells you where to go. Hey, so you kind of got that where you kind of go or you kind of not, right? Yeah, which I think they'll probably they'll definitely need the size of that map. Mate, most. I'm gonna need that. I saw yeah. I saw the way they were moving about and I thought, Jesus fucking Christ, I, this game's gonna be long. I can't be asked. I need Navi. I tell you a weird, a weird thing that I think they pulled some inspiration from on this is I think they have pulled some inspiration from Ghost, from Ghost Tsushima, because the way that the map was kind of so open, and it was subtly kind of guiding you towards places with you know like specks of light and like this kind of gusting, gusting things in the scenery which were kind of like guiding you somewhere. It gave me those kind of vibes. 
I suppose you could probably say this example for any open world game, really, you know, especially with like Zelda or something for Breath of the Wild, where, you know, he's putting markers down, it's lighting up things in the world, stuff like that. There's a lot of examples there to build on from that. Um, I reached out to a um, to friend of the show, uh, Willard, to get his take. He's obviously a massive Dark Souls fan, uh, having, you know, played PvP in, in all of them and just really just being a super mega fan, really, especially of Bloodborne. And he's beyond excited. Um, can't wait for it. Just for him, he was saying it's Breath of the Wild meets Dark Souls. And I was like, uh, yeah, I suppose that's that's really cool. I, I suppose that's, that's fairly bang on, to be fair. That's a, that's a really crude way of saying it. But I, I think there is something there. I'm super chuffed there's co-op in this. Yeah. I, I We're playing that. Definitely. Phil, I think that would be a way to get you into this series, actually, would be like day one, us three going through a co-op campaign together. Because this looks like the kind of game where I wouldn't be so protective as I am of my first playthrough, like I am normally with a Souls game. So Souls game, normally I start it, I'd want that experience on my own. I don't want anyone else there. I want to feel the pain myself. And then subsequent playthroughs then get the co-op involved, get some fun, you know, start just flying through it. This game looks like a different kind of rule to me. This game looks like let's th- just get in there, let's have a, a hard, difficult challenge, but at the same time have some fun in this open world. And I, I think there's something there do, for us three in that. Do you know what might get me into the game, though? It's all that horseplay. That looks so fun, riding around on that horse, especially when he was double jumping with the horse. That looked incredible. Like flying around that massive map on that horse, jumping up and down. All the verticality within the map seemed to be accessible on that horse, didn't it? Um, and one thing that really stuck uh, stuck out to me was you actually had horse combat. There was a part, I think he was riding past, I think maybe a dragon or something huge, some humongous boss. And he comes past on his horse and like swipes at the, swipes at the boss and... That was incredible. You don't see that very often in games, do you? Generally, you dismount before you fight the monster. But in this, it seemed like that was an option to you. You could come along on the horse and swipe at the demons. I was going to say, as a Dark Souls vet, I'll say, because I've played all of them, there is no shot I stay on my horse during those encounters. There is no chance in hell I'm getting off my horse because looking at that experience... He gets one hit off every time. You have to wait for the opportunity for it to land. Ride past it on your horse. You get one hit and that is it. Burn that. Burn that. I'm landing, pulling out my great club plus 15, and I'm smacking it to oblivion. Do you know what I'll say to that, Spence? Don't know what it means. Get good, bro. That's crazy. Get on that horse and start smacking things at the right opportunity, because <laughs> that looks sick. Mate, I'll beat that horse in a fraction of the time. What? Get your plus 15 horse. <laughs> plus 15 horse. <laughs> what, what I did like, right, is this aesthetic they've got now with, with <laughs> everything kind of being a bit magical and the horse, instead of it just, you know, just disappearing into your pocket or something, right, you just put the horse in your bag or some bollocks like that, like a lot of games, you know, do with like weapons and things like that. The, things are like appearing out of magic. Like the way that the horse just appears out of magic and disappears out of magic Every time that happened, that horse disappeared, I was like, ooh. I was like, ooh, I really like ooh. this. It, it reminded me the same way that when I played God of War uh, for the first time and I pulled the axe back and I was like, oh, this feels great. And even towards the end of the game, I'm like, fuck it, I love pulling this axe back. I got a feeling the horse is going to be like, ooh, every single time I get off it and it just disappears into little sparks. I'm going to be like, oh, I just really fucking like this. It's just cool. It's just a really cool little way. And also going off that same kind of thing about like things kind of appearing and sparks and stuff like that, having having little like creatures that you summon into battle with you and the different kind of ways those mobs can be set up and the way you can change them, that looked really interesting to me. Yeah, that looked super helpful, didn't it? Because I think there was definitely some early parts in the game where he like just summoned kind of like normal kind of enemies to like help him along. But it, that end boss fight you know the guy with all the hands and the axe and by the end of the fight he seemed to have some sort of like dragon's head on one of his arms which looked incredible when he grabbed him and breathed all that fire but then he brought out kind of like a bigger ogre didn't he and summoned that to be able to to fight him and then he brought out a big sword and lashed that down on them there was definitely some intricate kind of movement wasn't there with all those kind of summonings and like combos that you could definitely do 
So, yeah, I, I'm quite interested in the game, definitely, guys. You can see this, yeah? Sure. Yeah, mate. I, I knew, obviously, me and Spence would be hyped by this. They'd have to really, you know, fuck mm. up for us to not be hyped. But it's good to see this little, this little dip in, this little dip in the toe analogy that I'm but. using. Oh. There's a but. There's a but. There's Go a on. huge but, right? Remember how hyped people were about Cyberpunk? Oh, no, shut up. And shut they up. sold it and sold it and sold it. This is going to be the best game ever. And everyone bought PCs and, like, you know, did the whole room out in cyber junks shit, right? Shut this up. could be the same thing. No, this is up. overhyped at the moment. Everyone fucking loves it. So maybe I'll still sit on the fence because if it's bad, I'll go, I told you so, guys. But secretly, I'm quite interested in it. The difference there is Cyberpunk literally showed nothing, took what seven or 12 however many the 12 was doing forever on it seven years to develop doing them also trash seven years to develop and never showed a thing and there was literally a hype based off nothing based off a trailer that came out seven years ago a cinematic trailer we have gameplay we know mechanics from soft has never let us down other than dark souls 2 ever let us down once they've done it once it wasn't it's even that fine. bad it wasn't it was fine it was fine it was a great game it was just the worst start yeah. of the bunch i always like to offer that difference of opinion so let, let, let's just put that out there that potentially this might not be everything that it's you know people are hoping that it will live up to i know there's so many oh, fanboys when it comes to this series so it's very easy to overlook possible flaws within the game loads of people are hyped but let's just see how it goes you know like ultimately you guys are massive fanboys and you're both wanking each other off about this game to the max i can't believe you haven't come yet over this game because you absolutely you reckon i haven't you mad i blew two loads off earlier watching that trailer mate i'm totally spent i am spent but I, i mean what do you expect i mean dark souls ranked number two in our in our ign redo bracket right I wonder how that works. You don't have to be like, you don't have to have a math degree to work out how that, that ended up. So, I, I mean, this is the thing. We're obviously going to be super excited, but I do have a bombshell to drop on you guys. Davey Bomb. With this game coming out the same time as Horizon, both being big experiences, which one you play in, or which, either which one are you play in first, or because I, there's a week apart. So, you could just say, oh, I'll play Horizon 2 first or whatever, right? Which one are you going to be spending your time with when you both have them up for contention? Which one's your marry? Which one's your yeah. jag? Yeah, essentially. Yeah, which one Which one takes higher billing out of the two for you guys? Yeah, I'll go first. Yeah. It's the easiest one question of all the Elden Ring right away. I haven't finished the first Horizon yet. <laughs> I'm good. I think you're the, you're the deciding vote on this one, Dave, because it's pretty obvious that I'll be uh, knee-deep in Aloy. I think I'll be... I think I'll be joining you with Aloy at the moment. I'll be joining I'll be joining you with Aloy, yeah. I think out of the two, I'm I'm more excited by Horizon just because that story of that first game was sensational. And with the gameplay that they've shown already, I know it's going to be I know it's going to be an incredible experience and one that I feel like I don't want to wait for. Whereas with with Elden Ring I can wait a couple of weeks and I'm not going to be spoiled. Sure, I may see a boss, but seeing a boss is totally different from playing it and learning it yourself, right? So I, what am I going to get? What story spawn am I going to get from, from a fucking Souls game? The, the story is all told in the fucking descriptions of items. I, I, I never understand what's happened when I complete any of the games. Right, I'll tell you now. You're not going to get spoiled in terms of story, but this is cap. This is cap because Elden Ring is going to come out. I'm going to say... Yeah, I'm playing Elder Ring you down, and you'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'll be on now. And that's it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right, maybe. <laughs> but no, I, I, I'm sticking with this. If I have to choose between the two, if, say, say money was tight, I only had one, or someone put a gun to my head, and they say, you got to pre-order one. I'm going, I'm going Horizon. That's cat. <laughs> that's yeah. cat. So two for Horizon, one yeah. for Elden Ring. That's I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Is is the dice has been cast? I, guys. I mean, the only game that's going to lose out of this entire month is Sifu. Yeah, Sifu's getting, Sifu's shafted. getting absolutely fucked. Releasing uh, in February It's just going to be awful for it. But I tell you what, guys, that is mega exciting that all three of us are potentially in for this. Before we close this topic down, and I ask the audience, is there anything else you want to say about the game? 
I got one thing I want to ask Please. you boys. You know the whole, it was kind of like a uh, like a little uh, dialogue scenario they showed. Where it was a bloke, like the jar was stuck in the floor. And they got it out with a giant club. Did you think that that was a bloke trapped in the jar? Trapped in the floor? Or did you think it was the jar was speaking? Oh, I thought someone was definitely 100% in the jar. In the jar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but so I did I. <laughs> it would come to life. I thought it was one of those things that maybe you didn't see the arms and the legs. It was a bit like crack it, and then the crack would open up to be some kind of boss, right? And then inside was the victim, right? That's what I thought it was. Yeah, so did I. Thinking it. But yeah, weird one, weird one. Yeah, I thought it was a person, and then you walk the jar up, the jar stands up and turns around and crosses his arms. You're like, oh. Okay. I thought he was going to get up and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that jug that burst Kool-Aid through the man. wall. He did look a, a li- the Kool-Aid man. He looked a little bit like the Kool-Aid man, did he? Oh, it, yeah. it just a wall appears directly in front of him. He just runs straight through it. That'd be so class. That'd be so class. Uh, I tell you what I was also surprised about, actually, and I'm, I'm now you got me fucking going on about it now, that I would have had that last box that he opened be a mimic. Oh, mate, I said the same thing. Should have been a Do you mimic. know what I said when I saw this? I said it to myself. I, we knew it wasn't because of the chain, saw... right? So we knew it wasn't a mimic one. The chain? The chain was circular. Yeah. Oh. Also, what I was surprised about is now you can see the glowing coming out of the chest. Oh, I didn't notice like, that. Like, there was an actual glow. Just... Yeah, there was a glow emanating from the chest. And I wonder if that glow exists in mimics as well. But I saw the chain, and the chain was circular like it is in souls when it's not a mimic yeah because i was just too affixed on that chain i was like oh it's not a mimic i was like oh i wish it was though that would be hype if it just bit yeah. him and eat him i mean it's obvious like a souls thing but would have been cool would have been cool oh super hyped super hype audience all three of us actually which is quite surprising uh for, for this podcast especially with uh especially with this game are interested by it super interested by it in fact we are frothing out of every single orifice that froths, it is frothing like mad. Are you feeling the same way? Uh, do you have an uncontrollable growth in your loins from this game? Write into the email. Let us know. PS we trust, gmail.com. What do you think about the game? What do you like? Which wins between this and Horizon for your wallet? I want to know. So, boys, we're on to the final topic of the evening. For this topic, it has now been a year since the launch of the PlayStation 5, so what I really wanted to know is what are yours and mine, our overall thoughts on the console in its first year, how they've improved since launch, and just how you've fared with the console throughout. So the floor is open, let me know what you think. Okay, so do you want some sort of high level thoughts, right, you know, just to kick things off? Crack on, mate. Whatever you want to tell me, I'll listen. Okay, so I bought PlayStation 5 on launch, got it from Amazon. Uh, Extremely pleased that I was able to get it straight away because I thought it was going to be difficult and actually it was quite easy. Um, And I've loved having it and owning it ever since. It's racking up the games on my shelf. I don't know uh, what the number is just yet. I'm trying to look. Six or seven different games I think I've bought for the PlayStation so far. And it... It's pure quality so far in what we've bought and what we've played. There's definitely some incredible games. Um, we were mentioning them earlier in the chat. You know, some some of the classics such as Ratchet and Clank, you know, that's that's an incredible experience. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without PlayStation 5. I know there are so many games out there at the moment which launch maybe on PC or launch on PS4 as well. Um, but for the exclusive, for me, Ratchet and Clank is definitely the standout out of all the games that have come out on PS5. So I'm very happy to own one, and I'm very proud to to be a PlayStation 5 owner. I echo a lot of those thoughts, to be honest, Phil. Um, For me, personally, high-level thoughts, this is the best first year of a console in existence. Simple as that. There hasn't been a console that has had a first year as good as this ever. Ever. Where you're talking that in the first year you've got Demon's Souls, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Ratchet & Clank. We've got the game that can't be mentioned, Village. Oh my god, that was tough. That was a close one. That was a close one, boys. If I was drinking, I would have fallen for that one. Returnal, Deathloop, uh, Final Fantasy VII, um, the the remake kind of upskilling of that integrate, integrate thing. Yeah, uh, we got um, freaking Death Stranding. There's like there's so many there's so many games 
for this first year. And sure, not all of them are just for the PlayStation 5. A lot of them are cross-gen, or a lot of them are like kind of remakes or director's cuts. But in terms of quality experiences, I have not had spare time this year at all. There's always been something every month for me to play or something for me to be excited by. And I remember getting my PS4 and going years into the release of the PS4 before we had good quality first party software where we had Infamous and then nothing until Bloodborne. And there was just this huge sway for time where everyone was hyping up games like fucking ready at dawn's uh order 86 and everyone thinking it was going to be the best thing ever and it was just a six out of ten we haven't had any of those experiences on playstation 5 from first party at all they've all been bangers or if not they've been at least good i'm looking at you sack boy a big adventure so you're the weakest one <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that that's my high level thoughts what about yourself spence uh well for me again it's just echoing the same kind of shit the games we've been we've like got this year are fantastic. Jesus, the it, the the console launched with Spider Man and Demon Souls and Astros, and we platinumed the Astros before Phil got his console. Think about that, phenomenal. Platinumed it that first night, didn't we? Yeah, we got it on midnight launch, and it was platinum by four a.m. Fantastic, such a sick game. Astros is godlike as well. Those speedruns, I put hours into the speedruns. This the games the lineup we've had on the PS5 this year is exceptional. The PS5 itself, mine's been a bit buggy, but during launch, I thought it was actually like going to die. It turns out it was just an issue with my monitor, um, compatibility issues. I don't know, but that's solved. Now it just crashes every now and then. It's fine. You but do you tend know what? To find a lot of bugs in games, though, don't you, Spence? I find the bugs. The big bad bug. The bug hunter. There's <laughs> one thing that's going to happen every single time, and it's no matter what you play, no matter on what system it is, no matter on what firmware, no matter where in the world you are, you will find a bug somehow, somewhere. So... I'm not surprised at all that you had issues with your emulation because it's just in your blood at this point. It has to be. Yeah, someone, yeah, someone Photoshop a net in my hands. Some catching the <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It just happens. It just happens. But even through those bugs, I, I adore my PS5. I'm so happy to be one of the few owners of a PlayStation 5, especially with all the struggle people have from not trying hard enough to get a playstation it's just i'm buzzing i'm buzzing to my i love it i adore my ps5 every time i boot it up and it does that little shot i have a smile on my face i love it it's sick but guys it's not just about the games that we own that we've played on ps5 it's the games that we've got to look forward to and i know that's always an xbox thing isn't it yeah next year we'll have x game or next next year we'll have this and you wait and wait and wait and you know nothing ever materializes but looking at the upcoming games on playstation 5 now this is a loving this is a loving right here you know davey you've brought me on to god of war i'm buzzing for ragnarok cannot wait for it you know we've talked about you know elden ring gran turismo have you seen the visuals on that game i'm not a big racing guy but I cannot wait. I That looks stunning. And then, of course, Horizon. Oof. That game. What a sensational, big first-party year that is. To think you've got two of your biggest franchises going out straight... Well, going out in one year is just nuts, right? Where you think you've got Gran Turismo coming out in, like, the March, and then you've got God of War TBD probably coming out in, like, august maybe september uh, it's always a bit dicey around about about there but probably late yeah it, whatever it is like two of the biggest franchises for the console coming out in you know the second year of it being around is just insane and then to think the year after that we're talking spider-man 2 we're talking logan on the horizon let alone 
what studios like Bend are doing. We don't even know what like half the fucking ecosystem are doing. It, it, there's so much there for us to be excited about. Davey, we're still in year one going on to year two. This is a 10 year lifespan of this console. Just a mat like with PS4, obviously the better games came m sort of later on into the generation. Imagine what we've got to look forward to. It's exciting. It's incredible. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what we've got to look forward to, boys. Naughty dog. <laughs> That's true. Ooh. That's true. Whatever they're cooking at next, whether it be like a whatever they're, whatever doing. they're doing. If it's a, if it's The Last of Us three, if it's Uncharted five, it's going to be a banger. Whatever it is, I can't wait to see what they can do. What magic they can pull Music. on this. But guys, I do have a question for you, though. Obviously, we're all super happy with the console. We're all super happy with the way things are looking for the future in terms of game releases and, and happy with what we've had so far from the first party. Is there anything that you feel has been kind of underbaked or hasn't been utilized in the right way yet for the console? Do you really need to ask me that? Go on then, Phil. Let's start off with yourself. What are you going to say? Has, has the PS Plus offerings on PS5 been that good? Have they really been worth it over the time that I've had a subscription? And thanks again, guys, for that subscription. But the PS5 offerings have been piss poor. You've got Remnant. We had a class the time PS5 on Remnant. offerings. I think that was PS4 as well, wasn't it? This oh, is what, yeah, this you is missed what out I'm, on both snacks, what I'm talking about. Like, the PS5 offerings, since I've had it, have been pure trash. I mean, you I don't ape. feel I don't feel like they've made that bigger stride into offering us quality for that subscription. I think looking at it solely through just the the lens of PS5, which I then am. then yes, I think that's a fair statement to say. But the problem is with PlayStation Plus, the kind of value in it really, I suppose, is getting games which are a little bit older but generally quite high quality. I don't even think, I disagree. I think PS5 alone, we've got a value. You think what, how much is it a year? 32 quid, really, if you get a gift yeah. card? Yeah, yeah, about that. Yeah, we've got Bug Snacks, fantastic. Yeah. Actually, Great class. I love, I love Big Snacks, please. Worms Rumble, yeah, Eater. shit. Man Eater Great game. was great game. R2 Button Destroyer. Yeah. Good game, though. Destruction All Stars, trash. Marquette, Good great game. Yeah. Uh, Abe's Odyssey Soulstorm, great game. Great game. Uh, Wreckfest, the, none of us ever played. played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Wreckfest, none of us actually played. Operation Tango. Fucking fantastic game. Fantastic game. A Plague Tale I Innocence. I haven't played that yet. Tell you now, it's great. It's a great game. Hernan's really <laughs> 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 Yeah, but then Overcooked All You Can Eat, which is Overcooked 1 and 2 and okay, DLC. Okay, yeah, that's brilliant. Fantastic. And then Hell Let Loose, yeah, which, shocker. you know, yeah. But that's easily more than 32 quid. Oh, God, yeah. Easily. Just on PS5 alone. I'm not surprised in your response because you're both apologists for this uh, service. And you both absolutely love it. So I, you must be getting paid off by Sony because I'm hearing there's a lot of trash in there. And then one or two that maybe you would like, but... I would want to see more quality. We're on the PS5. This is a service I subscribe to. Give me something with some bollocks, right? There should be something interesting in this service for me. And and so far, I just haven't seen the value in it yet. Potentially in the future, they might push some more games. I know there was a period right at the start which they were struggling for games and they give me Man Eater or whatever the shark game bloody was. Good. Is it good? Yeah, it's fun. Good compared uh to what? Good compared to not playing games. Sure. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It was mindless fun. But I wouldn't have got a platinum on it if I didn't enjoy my time with it. There's something just really just satisfying about just mashing R2 and destroying everything in sight. And, it's all you, and do you know how, game is you know how much I love sharks. I mean, it's like the perfect game for me playing as the thing I love. I mean, what more can you want from, from a game? You know? But I, I see your I see your point. I understand where you're coming from. And when when Spencer's put it out there, yes, it's a no brainer. It's way worth the money, right? It's not like it's not like the Nintendo online service where I feel like I've literally thrown my money down the gutter. With with this, I actually do feel like yes, not every month's going to be a hitter. 
right? Not every month's going to be something. But in my mind, as long as you get two games a year that really stand out to you, that's worth that's worth it to me. You get your money definitely. Worth. I mean, the previous year we had Hollow Knight, and that itself, that just one game was enough for me to say that entire year is way worth that. And 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 that's it. And I mean, when you think we're getting all these extra, I know you weren't talking about the PS4 and PSVR offering because obviously they'd be massive as well, but. When you talk about the back catalog of VR games that we built up, even just over the course of the last three months, where we got all those summer games that were given to us, and then having uh, these extra games going on now in November's, we've got now a massive state of games there that are waiting for us when we get PSVR 2, when eventually that gets shown and we learn it's like £800 or whatever. But we've got a nice little back catalog there, all thanks to PS Plus. So, uh, yeah, I, I personally am super hyped for this service but i do get where you're coming from phil i actually do understand that on the ps5 segment of it but with another year now in front there's they've got all the games that came out this year they could always pull back on those and uh, and we'll, we'll see what kind of happens with that so that's your pick then so what about yourself spence what are you thinking what what do you think has been a bit either underperformed or undercooked when it comes to the playstation 5 for the last 12 months well i mean I'm the bug hunter, so you know my PC, my PS5 could crash less. You know, <laughs> it's a big one. Um, but in terms of like software shit they've done that I'd like to see improved, fam, just make trophies horizontal again. <sighs> I'm not standing for this. This is the it's the worst take, honestly. Our take is so different on this. It's insane. I'm so happy it's gone back to vertical now. You have no idea. No, but you know why our takes are different. Because you, for some reason, don't like seeing more of a list. No, I started getting Platinums on the PS5. <laughs> That's why. I'm used to horizontal. Would you... you started on the PS3, I'd imagine. And that was vertical. If someone put it right, if you're looking at a list, which makes more sense to view more? right with a description is it in a vertical or a hor when else do you see a horizontal list <laughs> they smashed it on playstation it's just uh, it really enough. surprises me that there isn't the option to change that no there is no option to actually tell you what i'll argue this fact is your tv larger vertically or horizontally <laughs> Davy has his TV in uh, portrait view. <laughs> portrait <laughs> mode, apparently. He's got it screwed to the side of the wall. So All it's right. a weird house. What can I say? That's look at him. He's that's stumped. fair. He's that's fair, right? Point. But when you, all right, when you pull up a word document and and you pu and you pull up a list, right? And you bullet point that list. Do you have it going across like this, or do you have it going down like this? Right. The issue with that. Right, this is, is the dumbest. This is the at. dumbest argument we've ever had. Let's go back to it how bad PS Plus because... was, because this is such... <laughs> no, I'll explain. <laughs> I agree. A Word document, right, is showing you a digital piece of paper, which you can't scroll on. You can scroll on PlayStation software. Am you I wrong? You can scroll on the mouse. You go up and down the page. Yeah, to more pages. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> right, we'll agree to disagree on this. So, so is, that, is that your big thing? That's your big thing that you're like, I just want to, to change that? Because if it is, I'll, I'll move on to mine. If you're struggling that hard, what you're really saying to us is PlayStation 5 is perfect. It's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. Well, give us the reasons why it isn't perfect. And you can't just say I know, scrolling I'm left or right and up and down. Come on. I haven't been on my PS5 in two weeks. You've got to know this. <laughs> just has just the worst memory known to man. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you two that I think needs to be worked on for this next 12 months. Uh, or just ongoing. First... Something I've mentioned a hundred fucking thousand times on this podcast. The first one, easiest day, <clears throat> make it so I can just customize the quick access menu fully. Add whatever I want in there. I don't have to go through into my profile to go into trophies. I can then just go straight into trophies. Easy. Easy firmware fix, right? Super easy. That would make my life way easier. Secondly, and the one that I think is an actual problem that I think they need to get better at is dual sense integration 
I don't think it's been done properly since Astro. Games have done certain bits of it really, really well, but not the full kind of vision that Astros have given us. Ratchet did it really well. Returnal did it really well. But they do, and as as Phil is pointing at his shirt there, Death Stranding apparently has done it really well. I haven't experienced that yet. But you get games which do bits of it exceptionally well and build it into gameplay. I just think there's more that can be done with that controller. And I look forward to seeing what the studios kind of come up with ongoing from here to make it so it's not just feeling the haptics when you charge a rifle or feeling the pressure in the uh, it in the L2 and R2 when you pull back a bow. Now it's kind of everything kind of like built into it from the ground up to take advantage of it. And it's only really going to be done with first party because third party, why would they spend all those resources when they got to support Xbox, PC, you know, all the different platforms. You you can't make it so specific. What we need is a developer that approaches a game like Nintendo approaches WarioWare. They look at the console and they look at the handsets and they just think, what is the weirdest way you could possibly use it? Like a unicorn or like, you know, just some weird shit like that. We need someone like that to take hold of the dual sense and let's see what is possible. I got one for you. And it's the, it's the only studio that I think could do something like that. And it's Media Molecule. I knew you were going to say Media Molecule. They could. And I mean, you know, they, they do some crazy shit. They go outside the box, you know, when they were when they were messing with VR originally to, to like mold clay and things like that. They're the studio that can do this kind of thing. They did wonders with the, with the Vita, with, with Tearaway. They, they can do that. Are they ever going to give up on dreams? Are they still going to be around in five years? I mean, we'll have to wait and see on that. Oh, bring, <laughs> bring, bring dreams to PC. Problem solved. Make loads of money. Shift them onto something like that. There we go. Party games. It'd be fun, though. Party games. Yeah, they're fun. Real I, fun. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're seeing it like as if it's a dirty word, but WarioWare is exceptional. So, oh, fucking phenomenal. So, Mate, there's a hell of a lot of party games that are just so fun to play. We've had so much fun with Knowledge is Power, you know, like That's You. And these are all kind of like throwaway titles on the PS4. Yeah, Get true. Get Media Molecule doing something like that. That'd be quality. Yeah, it'd be class. I'd be, I'd be more, well, at least it'd be a fucking game. I'll tell you what, boys. I've remembered something and it's my guess it i'll make it my complaint so you might want to play the bug hunter track i'll give you the long one when walls are spinning all around you you can probably aim your gun you find you're falling through the world I'll hunt you down cause you're a bug I find the bugs The big bad bugs The bug hunter <laughs> Right, so David you know about this but I think you forgot Cause I forgot until a minute ago as well what I want them to fix about PlayStation is the excessive amount of bugs I've experienced in all my time. I said this as a joke, but then I remembered the one. I was playing games with Davey the other week, and when he turned his PS5 off and put it into rest mode, it also turned off my PlayStation 5. I remember this. I remember this now. I totally forgot about this. I forgot about it till right now. When he put, I messaged him to say, did you just put your PS5 into rest mode? He said, yeah, why? I said, because mine went into rest mode as well. I didn't even turn Weird. it off. That is so weird. It's almost like you boys have got some sort of PlayStation umbilical cord between you. We're like sharing experiences. Yeah. Because you come on the show with the same views, and now your PlayStation is doing exactly the same bullshit. I was going to stay up and keep playing <laughs> games. And my TV is linked to my PS5. So when my PS5 turns off, my TV does too. So my PS5 and my TV just turned off, and I was just sat there like... What the fuck? <laughs> That's so weird. It's so weird. It's such a weird bug. That is so strange. I mean, it's never happened to us ever again, though, is it? We haven't played Actually, since. yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it happened tonight. I have to wait and see. Yeah, but, yes, yeah, that's a pretty weird one. I mean, to be fair, you cannot be the only person in the world, right, that has this kind of luck. And 
could it be chalked up that it's a launch day console? Yeah. Yeah, you, you probably could chalk it up to that. But there are still, every single patch we're seeing stability, stability patches. We're seeing stability improvements. So they obviously know there's issues. And I, I don't get them to the same level as you do, but I do get occasional game crashes, right? That does still happen every now and again. Super rare. It'd be like maybe one in every 10 uh, play sessions. And it's never caused me any issues. But if I was getting them like you were, I don't think I'd be as as rosy as you are about all this. I think I'd be a bit livid, to be honest with you. I think I would, probably would have sent it back by now. And got it's a an expensive replacement. Console. Mate, after my life, you take it on the chin. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess so, yeah. I guess. So is there anything else we wanna we wanna mention, guys, or are we done here? I think we've all agreed. We're very we're all very proud and very happy to be playstation 5 owners we love the games that we've experienced so far and we just can't can't wait for the future um there's a couple of things to improve but overall there's no deal breakers yeah i think all the things we've said really are, are more kind of like nitpicky things really rather than anything that's like a severe issue that we have um and that's always a positive start uh th that's always a positive way to go no one's taking it back to cex just yet I'm thinking, you know, because imagine if my scenario with Davey was I was streaming Days Gone and I'd played for like 20 hours straight and not saved and I was like showing him the end of it and then he's like, alright, I'm off the bed, <laughs> turns it off and I lose all that. Actually, rest mode would keep the game going. It doesn't matter. But imagine, right? You just went to CX, sold it on, someone else bought it and then when they turn their PlayStation off, Davey's <laughs> PlayStation turns off. <laughs> it's like I'm the class. haunted PlayStation. That would be horrendous for me. That would be a, that would be a nightmare for me. Uh, I'd, I'd buy it, Spence. Sell it to me, because I'd love that. David would be like, oh, I've really got really far in Elden Ring. I'd be like, no, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> that would be savage. That would be savage. Well, listeners, we'll keep you updated with the haunted PlayStation 5 and see if our, our ethereal umbilical cord is actually linked or not in future episodes. But that is the end of episode 29 of In PS We Trust. Hope you enjoyed listening. Thank you ever so much for your time today. Remember, there's one best way to support our podcast, and that is to review it. Please review it on, if you're on Apple, Google, Google. <laughs> wherever else, right? I don't care. I'm not fussy. Wherever you can put a review on, I'd really, really appreciate it. We all would. If you're watching us on YouTube, then hello. Thank you ever so much for checking out the video. Please put a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more content. Remember, we're our fortnightly podcast. We will see you here in two weeks' time for episode 30, The Big Quiz. If you have any questions you want to submit for any of us to use, maybe we could have a little section with just for audience questions. Who knows? Just write in. The email, psvtrust at gmail.com. Of course, you can join us on the Reddit. Lots of conversation going across all the different episodes that we've done so far. So if you're an early adopter, we can talk about God of War. Why not? Jump in. The URL will be in the description. And like always, please feel free to reach out to us on Twitter at MPS Trust or any of our individual Twitter accounts also in the description below. Thank you for your time, guys. I've been Davey. I've been Phil. And I've been Spencer. Take care, guys. Peace. In PS We Trust is hosted by Davey, Phil, and Spencer. You can write into the show via our email, pswetrust at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at in PS We Trust. To find each of us online, follow our Twitters at SSJDavy, at PhilipHoy, at SpenPi underscore. Thank you for listening. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. See ya.